Welcome to In The Stiffs Podcast with me, Sam Aston. I'm joined by my friends and former Shrewsbury teammates, Gavin Cowan and Dave Edwards. Big thank you to our sponsors, the Brilliant Budge and Motors, kindly sponsoring us in this third series. A family-owned business of 40 years with exceptional customer service. Loads of competitive deals on new and used cars. Get yourselves down there. Right, welcome everybody, another episode of In The Stiffs and we have a special guest today, a very unusual guest. Gavin, do you want to introduce him? Yes, welcome to an ex-professional footballer who started his non-league career at Christchurch. Moving on to Cambridge, playing 45 games where he was selected for the PFA Team of the Year. His next destination was Sunderland where he played in a, in a championship playoff final. Moving on to Wolves where he captained the, the team and made nearly 250 appearances over 10 years. Wow. This is where it gets unusual. An ex-footballer moving into the world of being an artist. His first exhibition of his works was called La Paleza de la Fusion. <laughs> You're welcome. In November 2015 at the Antidote Art Gallery in Leicestershire. Welcome to In the Stiff Studio, Jody Craddock. Welcome, Jody. I should have mentioned there as well, sorry, because I originally sent that script out. Jody also won promotion with Sunderland to the Premier League. And you can't miss that out, Sam. Sorry? I can't miss that's big, isn't it? No, this is massive, it's massive, but I, I've done like a second draft of it, but you won promotion as well, didn't you? Yeah. How many games did you play in the Prem, George? How many? How many games did you play in the Prem, yeah? Oh, for Sunderland? Yeah. I ain't got a clue. That's You've not got it written down. That should, no. like, that should be us, really, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, back to Jordy. You should tell me that. Jordy as well, Jordy, blessed enough in his career to play... With me and Dave. Well, wow. I've got many guests who've done that. Wow. Very, wow. very, very lucky man. Jordy's thrilled about it. I think that could be that could be quite important when we come on to pick his uh, all-time best five-a-side team at the end. Yeah. <laughs> didn't play, right. with, Jordy, didn't play back, with me, Joe. I was a bit, I was a bit younger than you lot. <laughs> Jordy, back to school then. So when you were at school, Jordy, what were you better at, football or art? Oh, football, for that doubt. But you yeah. were obviously a talented artist at the same time. And that is because I didn't have a PlayStation, basically. If I'd ever had a PlayStation, I wouldn't have been able to paint now. It's as simple as that. So, There's yeah. a bit of advice out there for youngsters, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. You know, as a kid, it was either go outside and play football or a basketball or anything sporty, skateboard, you name it, you know. But when it was raining, what do you do when you're back in the 80s yeah. and yeah. you yeah. don't have a phone or a computer because they're not even invented yet? Um, <laughs> what do you do? Play and football. mine was... Uh, yeah, we can't play football in the house. So this is what you say there. all the time, though, Sam. Isn't it? Obviously, being a head teacher, Sam's always saying, "Look, get them into the books, get them off their iPads and stuff like that." And although my kids will have bits and pieces, like your Evie as well, my Meadow is like she's just a bookworm. She loves a book, so she like she goes to school. She's the best reader, of course she is, because she's a, in books all the time. So it's not rocket it's science. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. So you you did well at school, though, Jordy, didn't you? Like, I, did, I, okay. I remember you coming to Sunderland, and, he will, and I remember everybody was going, "Oh, Sam, there's another geek coming who did well at school." And I, I don't. Know. I wouldn't say geek. I did my A levels, and I just kind of scraped through my A levels. Um, but I did my A levels because I didn't know what I was going to do. What kid at 16 knows what they want to do? I wasn't at that age good enough to be a footballer. Um, I was trying, obviously. So yeah, I stayed on at school and did my A levels. And luckily for me, football. Came about after that. You know, it came, nearly came about during that. Uh, Bournemouth, Tony Pulis was at Bournemouth and he wanted me to. So I'd, I've been to Bournemouth and we had a couple of trials and I played for their. What, Acad- what age is this? So this would have been 16, 17. So like that first year of academy football. Um, and they said, come along. And I managed to do well in the trials and, and they offered me the contract. I don't know what possessed me. I was like, I don't want to take it. I want to complete my A levels because I think I've always had the the thought process of I'm not quite good enough, so I need something to back up. And uh, so yeah, I did my A levels, and then they said ring, ring us up after. I rang them up, and it some I don't know if it was um, Tony Pusey's brother-in-law or something. He ran the academy, and I rang him up, and he just literally went who? And I was like okay, thanks, and just put the phone, and that was it. So that that opportunity had gone, and. Uh, would you recommend people, because I did that now as well, I didn't do a scholarship, I did my A-level, same as you. Would you recommend that as a pathway now? Or do you think it's too difficult now not to be involved with football? You, know, you think about how much... I don't know, Sam. It's a really difficult one. I'm really... I get, I've had, like, I've run kids' football teams and I see so many kids come, you know, at a lower level, not at academy level, yeah. I run the teams. And I see them come through and they're absolutely destroyed from being at 
a Wolves or a Birmingham or a Villa and uh, they're destroyed and it's because they haven't been good enough and they've just literally brushed them aside and then yeah. you you know I spend two or three months building them up and, and trying to get them to enjoy football again and um, so it's a real sticky situation I think if some kids are just meant for it and you just and they just need that pushing and but I think as a parent you have a big responsibility to say Look, you've got a very limited chance of, of becoming a yeah. footballer. It's under 1% chance that you will make it as a footballer. So go and enjoy it and do the best you can. But there's a very good chance it's not going to happen. So just be ready for have it. A ba- and, have uh, a backup plan. Yes, and always have a backup plan. Do you I think, mean, do you think the, um, the late developer, so you come into football late. I came into football reasonably. That was 16 before I signed for Shrewsbury. Sam, obviously you did. Gav, you went on your different journey as well. Do you think that's going to become less and less likely now with the amount of coaching that goes on in academies from the ages of four, five, that young, right the way through to 16, those late developers, have they missed out on too much football? It, it will become less and less, naturally. But, do you know, I just think those players that come in later just have a, a, a more of a passion for it. You know, I was thinking, I came in later for it and I was thinking, what an opportunity this is. I cannot let this slip by, and, um, and you ring every re- ounce I, of ability. Every out single of thing I had, and kind of pushed as far as I could go, and, and that stayed with me my whole career, and uh, and that's where I got to, where I got to, and I couldn't have got any higher, I couldn't have done any better than what I did, and I, you know, that was kind of my my peak, my limit I got to. Let's rewind back a bit, then. So you grew up in the Bournemouth area, didn't you? And then you obviously had that spell. You decided not to go, but you went into do your A-levels, and when you come out that, how did your football journey kind of go from there? So I was playing at Christchurch, so at the age of 17 I was playing at Christchurch, which was the Wessex League, which is a semi-pro team, um, men's football, and that it was that transition of playing, so I was playing Saturday afternoons, Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, that's what I was playing, so Sunday morning I was playing pub football, Sunday afternoons I was playing under 18s, uh, and it was that transition, though, playing men's football, just brought my game on leaps and bounds as a centre half. I just went from a kid to an adult really quickly in the terms of football. And but there's uh, no academy football then, no school of excellences or anything. No, nothing. Didn't I didn't even know it existed. That? Didn't even know it existed. That's mad, I went to Yeovil for trials to see if I could get a. You know, I used to write letters to teams, so I wrote tons of letters. Yeovil said, "Come for a trial." I didn't get in there. My mum says they said I was too small. I'm thinking I wasn't too, too small. small at all. Yeah. That's the blag, isn't it? Too yeah. small. You're right. The one thing you can have a go at me about anything. You can't say I'm too small. Yeah, you can see me touches small. off or whatever. Just, it's the not. go-to for parents, isn't it? Yeah, he's too small. I'm like, he's six foot two. My mum didn't even want to play. I just wasn't good enough. It was as simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, but it, yeah, is that I didn't. You know, you watch kids now. They have a big leap from. So, you know, I have three boys, um, 13, 17 and 19. And the 13-year-old, so you either get a, a kid that's tiny up against a massive yeah, kid because yeah. they haven't developed. Develop. And then they'll go again from 14 to 16. You'll again get that development. But at the age of 16, all those big lads that are... That you do see in the academies, which are you know bully football, you know bully um, yeah, power, the footballers, people, yeah. everything levels out. And at sixteen, then you you really yeah. do see who's the footballers, and then you get your players that will. I mean, we get we, I see now my little boy's seven, and he's just starting off, and obviously you get a few dads talking about other seven year olds going, he'll he'll play in the Premier League, and you're just thinking that is the. I don't know. I don't thing. know how you can see. You can't see. I don't think you can at 13, 14, can you? Even like you know Rooney, maybe at fifteen, he was a bit of a freak, and you think, and he's going to play, but you can't be saying it about seven and eight year olds. No, no it's a long journey. So you playing it, playing at Christchurch. How long were you there for? Must have been about a season and a half. Yeah, and against men, this is against. Blood. Lunatics, like, yeah. like there's a single swim moment in there, Jode. You know, when you're 17 and you come up against men, would you, is there a single swim moment for you there? Because there's a lot of young lads, isn't there? That I don't know. I think when you're a kid, you just get on with it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I just loved playing football. Yeah. You know, I loved so much. I used to ride my bike there to get... I couldn't get there. I used to ride my bike to get there five miles. I'd have my suit on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating like mad, isn't it? It'd be pouring down with rain. I'd have my suit on. And it wasn't just on roads. I had, like, with it, a racer. <laughs> I had to go across the common to get there. Mud all, mud all up your trousers. I had to go across oh. the common to get there. We've like got to do some animation miles. over yeah. the top of this, haven't we? It'd be brilliant. And I'd turn up and uh, I just love playing football. So... You know, but the men were lunatic, proper lunatic. Big, grizzly, so they hairy kind arse of men. Me in the face, and you know, so it was. It was a sink or swim. I had to really adapt quickly. I think you know. 
And were oh, you, I was, were you quite slight then, were you? I imagine at 17? Uh, I think I was, yes. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't skinny by any sense, but I was, uh, I was like a big player. Always centre back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was oh, yeah. where, where, where else were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't play, I couldn't play anywhere in the ten, else. In the <laughs> I couldn't play anywhere else. That was it, centre half or nothing. Um, but yeah, it was uh, adapt really quickly. So I was it? quick. I was quick. So you know, I got to twenty eight and I slowed down a bit. But uh, up to that point, I was really quick. So that gets you out of a multitude of yeah. problems when you're a centre half. And uh, absolutely, yeah. Well, a, a great apprenticeship for what was to come, really, because then you, it, to move to Cambridge United into Division Three, yeah, um, and actually went on a free transfer. Yes, what from from Christchurch? From Christchurch. I don't know. There was no my my son on fee was I will give you a pair of football boots, so no, I don't no, even no, know if I'd signed a contract. So, you know, it was it was one of them. But um, so how did that come about then? I suppose word gets about. There was a few clubs watching, a few scouts there watching. There's a scout called John Griffin for Cambridge and. Uh, yeah, just said, rang me up and uh, said, yeah, come down to Cambridge, have a trial, and see how you get on. Literally the next day, Barry Fry ring me up from Peterborough, who at Cambridge's kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, rivals, you know, opposition, and he's like, come to, uh, come to Peterborough, and I'm like, now I'm going to Cambridge, like next week. He's like, no, nah, you don't want to fucking go there, yeah. like you. Uh, I'm like, good luck, no. like Barry Fry, any I imagine. <laughs> so uh, so I, had, I, had a de- I had a deal with Barry Fry. He wanted me to sign for Peterborough at one point, and I was like, I'm in an R in loads, and he, um, he's like, well, if you sign now. Extra 50 quid. And I was like, no. I said, like, I've got to speak to my family. He goes, extra 100 quid. Go on, sign it now. <laughs> Put a pen in your yeah, hand, yeah, yeah. forcing your hand yeah, onto yeah, the yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a yeah. character, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Who, who was at Cambridge when you signed then? So Gary Johnson was a manager. So um, How would you find him? Because we've had mixed reports. Yeah, great, absolutely fantastic. I think before he was a manager, he was the, the youth team coach. Mm. And he did, I think they had a good, good team there. So yeah, then players coming through. And uh, I got on great with him. I was a young lad. Whether the older lads would say the same thing, I don't know. But what, uh, what was your contract at Cambridge? And can you remember? It yeah, did you get off the yeah. It was absolute pennies. I think I was on. I, had, I had, was so I was in digs, um, which I don't really know how much that was because it just came out of my yeah, wage yeah. each week, each week. And then I think I had sixty pound left per week, and I'd literally get to the end of the month, and I'd be borrowing a tenner off me mate, and I'd like <laughs> ringing the missus. Yeah, we didn't have mobile phones, yeah, and yeah, we had yeah. phone boxes, and I'd be like, "I got fifty p. That's all I got." <laughs> <laughs> all, all I got one mean, and a half minutes of chat, and that's it. But you mates, I think you're a pro of football. The get, the, get the drinks in. Oh get yeah, the drinks in. yeah. And there's always someone that's had more money than you, and you're like, <sighs> "Who was a Cambridge at the time then? Which players? Steve Claridge." Yes, it was um, some big characters. They were, yes. It was quite a famous team because that John Becker just left. But John Becker. That reputation so, being horrible, didn't they? Cold showers for the away yeah, team that and all it. that sort yeah. of stuff. Long grass in the corners of yeah, the pitch. Long grass just the hit the ball into yeah. the corner yeah. of the pitch. I think Dion Dublin had just left. But, um, sand as well, wasn't it? Remember Gary Peters used to say, it was long grass and he used to stick sand in there as well. He was John Becker's oh, apprentice, God. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So all those tactics, percentages, everything about he percentages. Was, uh, from what I hear, he was quite brutal. So I think I was lucky to... Lucky to miss that one. Well, so you had only you had one season there. No, four. Why well, had four seasons at Cambridge? <laughs> Your yeah, research sorry. is terrible. <laughs> Someone needs that. Yeah, so oh, this is the next guest. <laughs> <laughs> so seventy to twenty-one. Yes. And you played in the first team how many times? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, should we just say? Should we just say 160 so times? Sam, you've got Dion Dublin at the top of your page. He's next week. So you're in the first team, um, doing really well, and then uh, final year you got in the PFA Team of the Year. And then what happened there with Sunland? Yeah, they just they asked me to go up for a trial. I don't even know if players go for trials anymore. I went for a trial with Cambridge. Trialed everywhere, haven't you? Yeah, I went to <laughs> trial for a week at Cambridge, and then I went home, and then literally went back the week after. Um, and it was the same thing at Sunderland. I went up for a, a trial, and um, yeah. How did that work? How did that work, though, Joe? Because obviously, if you're you're obviously a Cambridge place, because it's it's very rare that'll happen now. And I know, I don't know. Did you go for a fee? We'll come on to that in a minute. But obviously, when you go from Cambridge to Sunderland on a trial, Cambridge have obviously got to allow that to happen. But that's quite risky because if you go up there and get injured and come back, yeah, like, oh, yeah. I, I didn't, even, I didn't even think of it like that. It was uh, sort of. Was, was you under contract still at Cambridge yeah. at this point? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, that's mad, though, isn't mental, it? How weird yeah. is that? Yeah, it doesn't happen a lot now. I think it did used to happen quite a lot in the day, didn't it? Because it was like, you know, taste the goods before you before yeah. you take yeah, them, exactly. I suppose. I can't remember you coming on trial, though. I just remember you coming in signing. Obviously, you didn't make a big impression in that trial. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, how, how long was the trial then? Weeks or two weeks, tops it was. Ah, and then I remember going back to, to Cambridge, 
And then, I don't know, another week later, they were like, yeah, we're signing you. And I think it was £375,000. Yeah. That's mad. That's, that's, a, wow. that's a big chunk of money as well. It's a huge chunk of money back there, isn't it? Massive chunk that of money. That was a, as an unbelievable division, trial then. For Division 3, you must have, you must have <laughs> done well in that trial. Must have been up against Sam. Made him look great there. I have gone the right few quid there, so I came for a Everyone, you're welcome. <laughs> Sam was like, Joe, do you want to come on a podcast? Mate, anything for you. Yeah. Anything for you after that. <laughs> you, you sorted me right now. You bought, you bought me Tesla after I bought outside, mate. So you obviously you've impressed in that trial massively. And then, so you come to, you come to Sunderland. What was your first impression then at Sunderland? Oh, I loved it. Fantastic. Just the first impression was the people were so yeah. nice. Yeah. That was but, my first impression. And I've, and I've always said ever since, you know, that. Yeah. Who were big influences there when you came in then? Who was there? For the players that were there, it was like, Quinny was there, wasn't yeah. he? Brilliant. Kev Phillips signed at the same time as me, um, yeah. but you've got Alex Ray and... Um, there was quite a big turnaround. That, I remember that season, there was quite a few lads come in, didn't there? Is that like Alan Johnson come in as well, I think? Yes. Maybe that time, Alan Johnson, Kevin Phillips, yourself. Remember little Chris Byrne? Oh, I was talking well. about him the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah, Chris Byrne. What a footballer he was. I don't know what's happened to him now, Andy, but he was a you really player for Man City. Are you City. serious when you say you don't know what happened to him? Well, I, do, I, I know a little <laughs> bit, but I don't know where he is now. I don't know where he is now. I don't, know, I don't know where he is now. I'd be surprised if he's not in prison now. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> not one for the podcast, yeah. no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. I think we we'll do a mate. Have to do a podcast with him. We might have to do that on location. Day <laughs> <laughs> trip. Yeah. I, shared a, I shared a house with him as well. Did you? Yeah. What was that like? It's lunatic, absolute lunatic. He come in. this Chris Byrne. Um, he started the first game at the. At the oh, he was the, a good player. The first game at the Stadium of Light. So you'd, you'd have just come when the stadium... The first I the stadium signed Light. the day the stadium so Light So the opened. first game at yeah. the Stadium of Light, we, um, we lost to Man City 3-1. No, we beat Man City 3-1. Now Quinn scored, didn't he? I was subbed. Did you, were you involved no, in that? No, no. Chris Byrne started, didn't he? So Chris Byrne started the first game at the Stadium of Light and that. Like, obviously this kid. And he was like, he was a proper mank lad, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and yeah. he was like... Didn't rough. even like football. Yeah, like rough Hated as football. Toes. <laughs> he was, and he had, he had his mate stopping with him, didn't he? He was like, he's like, oh, I've got my mate stopping with me because he's on the run and that. And we thought this lad's done. Oh, is that also. playing golf with them? <laughs> yeah. Harbouring a murderer he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was. <laughs> he was. The police were after him. <laughs> well, he, he could play football, couldn't he? But he was like, this is a right. natural footballer, yes. was he? But he played in that game. I don't know how many other more games he played. He couldn't Not have played many. many. <laughs> he couldn't have played many, but he was a loose we to find out what he's doing now. Yeah, I'm really intrigued. He's a loose cannon. But before, yeah. but before you go on anymore, just moving from um, Cambridge to Sunderland and the Stadium of Light, you must have thought this is just incredible because what a stadium, especially when it opened. That yeah. was the yeah. first of its kind, oh, really, yeah. wasn't it? It, it was, it was so to, exciting at the time. So for me to go Christchurch, yeah. Cambridge to that, yeah, that's mad. I know it's crazy. Um, yeah. And I was still a young, young lad. And you had some it was kind of a dream come true. You had some good young lads because you were yeah older than me. There was me and Paul Heckenbottom our age, and we had some like, we had some good players. And we had Mickey Gray a couple of years yeah. ago. Daz Williams, Daz Williams yeah. as well. So we had some like we had a good set of young lads, and some like. really good like senior players. So it it, it was like yeah. really exciting time. Played Ajax, I think the first game, but Man City was the first league game. Quinn and Phillips up front, like oh, it was, just, so well it was like you could tell the club was just yeah, was going places. Yeah. So for you coming from Cambridge. Where they've got cool showers in your rear dressing room, just a different world. Then, yeah. did you feel, Joe? Did you feel? You know, when you're at Cambridge, just going back a little bit, did you feel like you were doing that well to get a move? Do you feel like you were on the crest of a wave, or <sighs> you know, if you play well or you yeah. don't play well? And I always just, you know, I used to just give everything I had, and uh, it just seemed to be enough. And you know, if you, you know, I got in the team of the PFA team of the year at Cambridge, yeah. so yeah, I knew it was going well, but. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get a move, does it? No. You know, it doesn't mean I'm going to be good enough to go to Sunderland. I had to go to Sunderland and then adapt and improve before I was put in a team. It just so happened to be the first year I was there. It just happened so quickly. And uh, next thing I know, the first season was played at Wembley, which yeah. was... So that first wow. season, we, we got in the playoffs, didn't we? And yeah. that was the cup final at Wembley. And... Um, that was against Charlton, wasn't it? Yeah, the that was the, the, the one. one was yeah, it? But like, before we come on to that, before we come on to who scored four and who was marking him, we've got to come on to that in a minute. We'll come on to that in a minute. But up to then, up to then, like, Sunderland had had a really settled centre-offs, hadn't they? Like, Richard Orden, Andy Mel, really experienced. Yeah. And Peter Reid, like, because he was brave, one, he would just throw people in. And he's just got rid of them two senior centre-offs who were top, like, Wales International. Richard always supposed to be on the Virgin team. And just stuck Geordie and Daz Williams at centre-offs, didn't he? Yeah. And They've been on a bad thing. run, haven't they? They've been on a bad run. They yeah. lost a few well, games. centre-off, did he? Yeah, he's centre-off. Centre-off for Sunderland with Geordie. Them two. Because he was a midfielder, weren't we? For quite a bit. Wow. And then, yeah, then we got to that wow. final. 
I'm talking to Raphael then. I've, you know, I've never watched that game ever since. Yeah. I just, uh, was it was three all after, or was it three or four all after? Four all it was. Yeah, yeah and then it went to penalties. Mickey and, uh, it's the Mickey, Mickey Graham, Graham one, yeah. Penalty, yeah. Bless him, you know. Yeah. In well, that though, not, Joe, not, I know bless, not, sorry, not, not bless him because he got he had an amazing time off the back of it because we went we went eye and apple with him for two weeks afterwards and that and he milked that they don't believe he was crying in bars to get girls and <laughs> so don't worry about that he milked it I wouldn't it worry about him yeah he loved it we were getting free taxis everybody feeling sorry from around London when we were going for drinks and that he was all right don't worry about me yeah he yeah. was fine <laughs> obviously when Douglas scores four goals and a narrative will be that oh you've had a stinker because you're marking but did you feel in the game like obviously. You know, you know yourself. Like it's not all down to you know you marking him or whatever. Was it? Did you feel like you played okay? Or? Yes, I did feel I like played okay. Um, it was one of them goals, one of the penalties at the end. Can't I, I thought he scored oh, he a hat trick. I thought he scored three. I think I think he scored five. <laughs> 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 no, it, it might, I think yeah, he did, he three, did score four. three. He did yeah. score three. three. I think um, yeah. just Sean Newton scored another one. Yeah, yeah. The winger. Yeah. But like Lionel Perez was in goal, wasn't he? And he was like he was loose and he'd come for every face yeah. travelling with him. Yeah. He was crazy, like wild. And he, he come for one, didn't he? And missed it by a mile, didn't he? And we yep. kept on getting back in it. I remember Nicky Sumby scored a good goal, but and lost on pens in the end. Yeah. So it was tough, that. Did you, how did you feel after that game, then? I was just glad I didn't have to take a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was next. I'm thinking, well, I'm going next. to... Danny Diccio saying, he's our centre-forward, saying, I don't want to take a penalty. Williams <laughs> 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 are thinking, <laughs> yeah, he's not yeah. going to take a penalty. Yeah. 26 year old centre-forward, <laughs> take the pen. So it was either me or Daz Williams. Next. And I'll so that was championship playoff final. Championship yeah. the final lap. So then after that, what happened? After, what happened after that? Then following season, um, Peter he brought another centre half in, Paul Butler. So that was me back on the bench, which is, uh, you know, I was still only a young lad. I'd only been there se- uh, just that season. So um, and then they got promoted with record points. Yeah. And I didn't. I did play a few games, but I didn't play many games. And then. Um, and they went to the Premiership. That's what, which was an odd scenario. They played when they went into the Premiership instead. Are you um, you going up though with Sunderland into the Premier League again? Another milestone for you. Did you always know you were going to stay there and kind of fight for your place? I know it turned out well for you in the end, but was there because you hadn't played as much that season? Was there ever talk of you moving on? No, there was no talk of me moving on. I was still only a young young lad, but it always seemed that. I was always up against somebody every single preseason. It was always another centre half coming as Emerson Tome coming in, you know, and I partnered him. Stanislav Varga came in another year, Thomas Hammer another year, and I'm thinking, oh, I just felt like I was always up against someone. But you know, I just you actually went out on loan, didn't you, to Sheffield United? Yes, I so did. That, that was so that was when I was. That must have been that second season when yeah. they went into the Premiership. I must have gone, and Adrian Heath was there. And I really enjoyed Sheffield United. It was great. and Good um, experience. Do you feel like that helped you to go yeah, back and then... It did, because again? I think that's when they brought Stanislav Varga in. And um, he'd had a knock on his on his um, calf in a game. And what's it called? Compartment syndrome or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it literally yeah. blew up and he had to have a big operation on it. And I was back in the team. Simple as that. And I... Then I was staying in the team. Because there is a narrative sometimes if you get pushed out on loan, you feel like, oh, I'm getting alienated here. But, the, you know, managers will go, oh, you know, I just want to keep you ticking over and make sure you're getting games and you're fresh to come back yeah. and all Which that. Which I didn't, I didn't mind because if you're not playing football, I wanted to, just wanted to play football. So, yeah. yeah, I went and I knew a couple of lads already from Sheffield United and uh, I really enjoyed it there. It's, you know, it's some good time. Like when I was at Cambridge, I went and learned to Woking. Yeah. When I was at... So I went to, to Sheffield and Wolves. I went to Stoke. Always served as a good purpose for yeah. you to kick on. So I never, I was, always saw it as one of those things. And, um, you know, if it meant me having to move there, providing I was playing football, I, I didn't mind too much. Was it your choice as well? You know, in the moment, did the gaffer come to you? Or, or were you sort of like, look, I'm a bit of a spare part. I'm sort of hanging around, like, can I get no, out and get some they games? Came to, they usually, they came to me and yeah. was like, Normally you want to go on loan, yeah. it'll do you good. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. If I'm playing football. And again, though, just obviously that promotion with Sunderland, it's, you know, there's, there are players always say to me, oh, you know, it's always bittersweet when they get promoted to the Premier League because players will always know that they're going to buy better players. And, and I'm like, yeah, but your stock flies through the roof. Like, you know, you've got another club, like a club like Sheffield United, who are just like coming chasing you, yeah. saying, can we? Because they know that you've got what it takes to get promoted from the level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it gave me that opportunity to get more experience and... Uh, just pushed my game on, which yeah, it did, because then I came back into the team and, and then I stayed in the team after that. Premier League debut? you remember much of it? No. <laughs> Do you know who it was? No. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable. Do, do we? <laughs> do we know, Dave? Do we know? Just the blur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we asked Wits to do the Premier League years. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd have been on loan at Sheffield and I would have probably yeah, come, back come back in. Yeah, come back from Sheffield. 
It's poor, isn't it? That I don't remember my own Premier League yeah. day. Yeah. It's pretty poor. That, it's no, pretty Jordy, poor that we haven't researched it. No, but you're a bit like that, though, Jordy, aren't you? Like things like that, I don't think are mass- massively important to you. Like you're saying, you can't remember. You don't know how many games you played. You're not. You're not sure who your debut is against. There'll be some people who could tell you about every single goal. Yeah, I've just got scored. a really bad memory. Oh, right. oh, <laughs> I've that, headed so many footballs. <laughs> I don't even know how I got here today. <laughs> so you had four, you had four years. Tesla drive you with jokes. <laughs> you had four years then, the Premier with Sunderland, up till 2003, then got relegated 2003, mm. that would have been them. So you had P- Peter Reid as well. How did you find Peter Reid then as your manager? Old school. Ridiculously old school, weren't you? Old like, school. We used to have, like... When we used to have, used to play away, it would be full on. Like after the game, you'd have pizza or whatever, and everybody would be on the beers cans, wouldn't they, on the way back? Yeah. But the team spirit then, oh, was it was unbelievable, incredible yeah. team spirit. We were, Everyone was together. It yeah. was brilliant. We finished seventh in the Premiership twice, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, and we'd be getting off the coach in our tracksuits, going <laughs> clubbing, <laughs> drinking, <laughs> and but it was so good. Yeah. I didn't. I mean, I didn't always play in the games, but I come into my own, getting in the tracksuits, going in. Like, always sorted that out all right. Like, we used to take our bags. We used to take our bags and go and, like to Idols and Chambers in Sunderland in our tracksuits. We used to put our bags, like our Avec bags, or I think it was that. that was it, yeah, might yeah. be our Avec, or we had Asics as well. Put our bags behind the bar and just be out like in the Sunday nightclub, like in your tracksuits, and we'd rarely. Really had much Chelsea. bother. Didn't yeah, you? I had no bother. Like just well, get Mickey. Nice things, but a little bit, just trying to get Mickey and Mickey Gray home safely. Yeah, he'd be lying on the speaker, <laughs> lying on the speaker in the nightclub at the end of the night. I had to pick him up and carry him out. Yeah, <laughs> but it was a great time. But who, so who did you knock about with a lot then? With Neil Wainwright was a good friend. Yeah, Neil. Was, he, as yeah, well? Neil. That's where that's where Williams. Yeah, that's that's where he me. So, uh, so that, what so about the um, what about the derby then against Newcastle? You experienced many of those games. Few, not loads, but a few. That for me, they were. Massive, massive games. Yeah. Yeah. As a footballer, they were my biggest games. You yeah. remember them, Jackie? That, that, yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that, mo- that is a monster of a fixture, though. It is. So yeah. who did you play against for Newcastle when, when oh, the, the Derby's... Shearer, yes. Kieran Dyer. So good, good. Like, you know, really. Tell us, so, talk, talk about playing against Shearer, then. Just dirty. Yeah. Loved you, loved, you loved a battle and a yeah, scrap, Yeah, that was my game, yeah. You know, but so did he. Gone past the ball. I <laughs> just <laughs> used to head it. Tackle and just you know. So when he played against Shearer, how did you go on against them? Just wanted it. Oh, uh, all right. We I remember we here. beat them uh, at St James's. Tommy Thompson saved the penalty. Yeah, I remember oh, that. Yeah. Game. So, but just unbelievable. Just it doesn't get better than I suppose unless you're playing in cup finals. Yeah. It doesn't for me. It didn't get better. You know, I'd be like a you know a coiled spring waiting. I, I knew what it meant to the the fans, so it kind of rubbed off on me as a player and. Um, you know, I'd be pacing up and down. The, you know, you go and stay in a hotel, wouldn't you, day before? I'd be pacing up and down. I just think I just need to get you, on the football pitch. You all seem quite chill. Were you not quite chill though before games and stuff? I always remember you being quite relaxed. No. Yeah, I was chilled, like sat on the coach, but yeah, but inside, inside, <laughs> I was just yeah. like a mess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, were, were you the type as well to rise to that occasion, Joe? Uh, you, yes. Yeah, because a yes. lot of people like obviously that nervous energy builds up, and they sort of shirk away from it a little bit those moments he seems yeah, to me like the way you're talking find another 10 percent from somewhere which you kind of think well you should have that every single week but it's just a derby and everything it's, it's a fine line it doesn't overboil as well yeah, especially yeah, for a exactly. centre-back who has yeah. to be aggressive you don't want that to end up first minute yeah. you go through the back of Shearer the, leaving elbow and oh, sent yeah. off yeah. yeah but I wasn't that type of player I wouldn't yeah. do that because I knew what the consequence was so I was never even though I was like really kind of worked up I never thought well oh, I'm just going to go and smash someone yeah I would say and the Shearer one um, baff, um, fascinates me because, like, having never been anywhere near ever playing against him, he's the one that I always thought I'd love to just have 10 minutes just to see how far away I was from that level, just knowing that you'd have, probably end up with a broken nose, get run in the channel, he'd <laughs> come short, chest it, and just batter you. It, it's, how, did, how did you feel like you're fair? Because I'm arguably the best striker that's ever... Yeah, I'm fine. It's one of them, you know. I just kind of concentrated on my game. Yeah. So I did the things that I knew I could do well, which was... I was good in the air. I, could, I was quick. I could read the game game well, and I think I just concentrate on those things, and then try and block out. You know, yeah, don't I think get long, long limbs as well. We used to get the amount of time that you used to stretch your legs. Yeah, out. Slide used to tackles, rapid gadget leg, and that didn't you? Because your leg used to come out and you used to like make last ditch tackles all the time. I remember that in training. Sometimes you think you were past, and your leg would just come from like five yards behind, and just get, <laughs> just get a little tony. Like, <laughs> Does any any strikers stick out, Joe, from that era, which you felt gave you a lot of trouble in yeah. terms Teddy of Teddy Sheringham? Yeah, is and that because he's dropping into areas? Yeah. He dro- and he would everything be first time. 
Yeah. So a player that got hold of the ball was great for a centre half because it gave me the opportunity to get close and maybe get Nick a toe or yeah. force him back that way. Teddy Sharingood would literally, as the ball came into him, it'd be around the corner and it'd be gone. I was thinking, God, that's so difficult to mark against because yeah. what do I do? How do I affect him? Yeah. How do I, you know, yeah, get stop that? And it was difficult. And then Les Ferdinand, who was so good in the air, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really, really difficult you to mark. Assembly, so really? when the ball's coming in from the side and you know you're 1v1, you feel vulnerable, you think, oh, oh, not a lot so I good in the air, it was ridiculous. And I'll be jumping with him and he'd still beat me in the air. I remember, we, where was he at? I can't remember who it was against, but he scored from a corner. Newcastle. QPR. QPR. Who? He's best known for QPR, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> QPR. Spurs. It was it? Yeah, probably. And uh, I just couldn't. And I jumped with him. I did everything I had to do. And I still couldn't get up with him. Wow. Just before we leave Sonnen and them, so yeah, Peter Reid left, but you were still there. Yeah. And Howard Wilkinson come in. Yeah. <laughs> come on, how, how did you find Howard? Difficult. We, had a, we used to have a meeting Expand. about a meeting. Yeah. And it which, was, which was completely different. To what we had a had meeting Peter every yeah. single day. The first thing we did was have a meeting and he'd give us all a DVD about geese flying in formation. And we're, yeah, yeah. You know, how's this going to get I'm us sure, out I'm sure that geese <laughs> in formation, that's part, I've done that in assembly before. <laughs> <so> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I've been he'd that, ripped yeah. it off the internet and give us all a <laughs> yeah, copy of it. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough gig when you got like all professional footballers who are trying to sell that, it isn't is. it? But, meet, but you don't want meetings, do you, like that? I think a lot of clubs are moving away, I think, from having, I don't know what you're like, Gav, but you're trying, you don't have meetings for the sake of having meetings. I don't do that in my job anymore. You just, if you don't need a meeting, you don't have it. If you send an email or you have a quick chat, you do that. It's definitely when needed, but I think there is an element, especially as the game's moved on, analysis is like a massive part of it and does help. So I think it's trying to get the balance between, I mean, certainly for me, not having the players as much as what I would like, trying to get the balance between going, right, here's some information, trying to make it really short, succinct yeah. and yeah. in and out. Exactly. So I, yeah. I try and make sure that they're no longer than eight minutes. Yeah. Eight minutes, because after after that period, you just see the lads looking at the yeah. floor. The attention <laughs> span is very yeah. short, yeah, yeah, very yeah. short, really yeah, yeah. quick and easy. They're, they're, the players would probably argue it's a lot longer than eight minutes, but in my head, it's eight minutes. So yeah, yeah for, like and four or five clips and then we're just, you know, gone. So was, was Howard picking you? He was, was he picking you in the team? Yes. Yeah, he it was him, Steve playing. Cottrell. So I was still playing. Um, Who was Steve Cottrell was there? Yeah, he was his right-hand man, yeah. I and I used to g- he, was I, he was brilliant. And uh, oh, I got on really well with him. He was oh, wow. superb. They were just two different kettles of fish. Yeah. And uh, like, Howard Wilson just loved the meeting. And then we'd be, s- on a Friday, you want to do a five-a-side, don't you? Five-a-side, Friday is Thursdays, yeah. all your bit, you know, yeah. if you're going to do team play, phase of play, all that stuff. Fridays, five aside, maybe a few free kicks, and that's yeah. all you want. No, we'd spend half hour lining up the wall for a free kick every single week, and that's no joke. Yeah. Just make notes there not to yeah. do that on Thursday. <laughs> <first, though. laughs> so even if it's the same as the week before, yes. everything's exactly the same. <laughs> it's the same team, it's the same thing. We did it last week, it's fine. And we, and we wouldn't even play it by the side, and then we'd be like, with Steve, you know, and chance for But you're still, you're still in the team there, though, aren't you? You still play and just playing yeah. devil's advocate, Joe, as well. Like from a, like, I'm in agreement with you, by the way. But from a manager's perspective, surely repetition's massive. Surely you've got to, you know, be doing the right things and ingrain it in the players' heads. But does it just get to a point where the players know, and you just you revisit every now and again, as opposed to just smashing it into the ground, smashing it into the ground? Because that's the balance I try and get. I'm like just trying to still find my way and understand. And <laughs> it is difficult, isn't it? If you're a new manager coming in, do you just go right? I'm just going to impose all my yeah. All my ways and beliefs on it, or gradually kind of change it over a period of time. Yeah. And well, Wilkinson was like, it depends where it is. It depends where it is at the time, though, wasn't it? I mean, it, it suddenly it was having a bit of a struggle then at the time, though, weren't they? Before Howard come in then? But they yes, had, yeah. Pete Reid just Reed literally just got sacked. Yeah. yeah. So he's probably come in and thought, I've got to try and change things a little bit and maybe instill a bit of a different culture, I suppose. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just trying. But to then think. everyone went, everyone started getting injured because of the. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. When Howard Wilkinson got sacked, um, Mick McCarthy came in and then he went from it went from down here to the intensity went to up there and you've never got seen so many injuries ever yeah. like everybody Thanks. was injured it was and that was purely because so the intensity changed so as you so talk us through your last few months at Sunderland then when you, you did you think I was injured you were, you were injured <laughs> yeah. you? I was one of them that got injured and so then how what's happening there then so are you thinking what am I going to do what's happening in my was your contract up uh, no 
But some players had to go. It was as simple as that. Um, I love Sunderland. I just happily stayed there. And you've got my, nothing but happy memories. Of yeah, I loved it. I just stayed there my whole career. Fans were fantastic, yeah. everything. But it was just one of them. They just wanted to offload some players and I was one of them. And it gave me the opportunity to stay in the Premiership, which uh, who wouldn't as a player? So where did you finish that season? Can you remember? Were you rock bottom with Sunderland or was oh, it, were you fighting we, towards the end? I, I, we must have been rock bottom. Had long gone by then. They were getting out. They started getting out of the dead wood. Then never mind the real dead wood. That, that, that had gone. That had gone a couple of seasons before, hadn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember. If I can't bottom, remember. But yeah. <laughs> so then, obviously, you came to Wolves, which is a, a huge part of your career. The sort of main bit of your career in terms well, of longevity. Oh, right, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might have time then. Yeah, was that? Was there any other teams on the cards at that point, or was it always Wolves once they made contact and um, got the fee agreed? Not that I can remember. Uh, there might have been a couple of different ones, but uh, yeah, it was. It seemed that, that Dave Jones was interested, and uh, so I went down had a chat, and simple as that, really. Right they'd just been promoted, so they're in a good place at that yeah, point. Yeah, um, Jolene Lescott was injured, so they so needed, they were, they were they needed the championship wolves. They just won the championship, the the final at Cardiff. Yeah, yeah. yes, they just Jolene won Lescott that. was injured, so they needed a centre half, so they brought me in, got relegated. <laughs> 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 1.75 million. Yes, it's a lot of money that, though, isn't it? 2003, that's an awful lot of money. You had, you had some big characters in that dressing room that first was, year you yes. were there. Yeah. Huge Paul characters. Lynch, Dennis Irwin. Wow. Big, big characters. Oh, wow. How did he find that then, going in there? Fine. I, I used to find I'd get on with anybody. Yeah. But, you Quite know, easy going like that. Yes, yeah. yes. So that was not That was never an issue. you know. But as a team, we got relegated that year. And as a team, we weren't good enough. And it was as simple as that. you know. What do you think the team was missing? Was it... Just quality well, or not no enough legs in there? Or? Yeah, the legs. You, a lot of experience. You know, we had players that, yeah. towards the end of their career. So Incy was at the end of his career. Um, I think he must have retired after that. I think it was at the end of Alex Ray going there as well. Was Alex Ray there? Yeah, Alex that? was there. And was Alex was quality. Out, yeah, he was quality. Bit. Kenny Miller? Yeah, Kenny was there. And it, you know, so another quality player. Yeah. So we had, uh, but it was tough, you know, teams are buying players. And we bought Oleg Lusny from Arsenal. <laughs> I just remember, you know, when you play, it's either the first or second week of the season, you play the League Cup, Cabo Cup, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it started, and uh, so they usually mix the team up, don't you, and give a couple of the players that are on the fringe a, a game, so yeah, we yeah. played him centre half, and I'm thinking, great, give me, you know, rest me up for the weekend. The first time the ball went into him, he ducked to the header, right, and, I, and the manager just went, you're on. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> no, no. This is literally five minutes. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you know, you've got to buy wisely, and that well, wasn't wise. Was you, was you there when Gaza came and trained? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go on, tell us then. What was that like? It, do you know, I've never laughed so much in my life. He was the funniest person, funniest football I've ever met in my life. Even just walking in for one session, like, there's no, it was there's no getting to know the lad. <laughs> He's just coming in, like, off the cup. He was hilarious. Well, why? Why? We used to get, well, we used to get changed in the, in the tennis, over at the tennis club at Compton. And he'd just, and he'd come in, he'd cover in tattoos. I'd be asking him about them. And he'd be telling me how he got them in Thailand. And I'd be, and I'd be in hysterics. <laughs> and then he'd play, but his downfall was he, he, you know, he should have given up the game, but he, one, he couldn't give up the game. That's what he loved. And uh, there were still flashes in training of pure brilliance. And I remember we do like a five a side, but there's three teams rotate. And um, you see flashes of uh, absolute genius of Gaza. And I'd stand there, be like, I'd be like, stood next to a couple of the centre midfielders. I'd be going, Jesus Christ, that's yeah. good. They'd be like, going, no, no, he's, <laughs> no, he's had it. He's at his time. Yeah, so. But uh, yeah, and I think he played a reserve game. And he just couldn't do what he wanted to do yeah. anymore. And I think that was it. I think uh, Killer from So he just, come, he just come to train, really, though, wasn't it? Just to try and get yeah. himself back fit. There was yeah, that was it. And he was fun. I used to play head tennis with him in the morning. He was a, just had me in hysterics. Yeah. But he was, a, he was a genius. And I saw flashes of that, which was yeah. nice. because. Wow. Uh, How was it at Paul Ince as well? He can, be, he can be a difficult character. Was he all right with you? Yes, absolutely fine with me. He was uh, a very strong character on the pitch. Yeah. And I... Personally, I felt he struggled in that premiership. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he, you know, he got injured and then he didn't. You know, that was kind of him. That was finished. But I think he sh he sh did struggle in that in that um, premiership year. And the game for me personally was was too quick for him. You know, I got an absolutely fine for him. 
and uh, with him. It's just unfortunate. It's just age, though, isn't it? There's nothing you it can is. do. It is. Yes. It catches up. I, you saw that when I played no testimonial, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> saw it when you played in Jody's. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an exodus of players going out the door at this time, Joe, and then you're handed the captaincy. That must have been a real proud moment for you. It is. I think that's kind of... I managed to... I was captain at Cambridge and Sunderland and Wolves. It's kind of a, a nice thing. It's a way for the manager to say, you know, I trust you. You're going to go out there. I think, you know, when I've, I've run teams, like kids' teams, you you give the captaincy to someone you can trust and that will kind of lead by example. Was I was never a screamer on a Is that Dave Jones who gave you that? Or no, Dave Jones. So, Mid- so, you got, um, so you got relegated from Premier League under Dave Jones yeah. and then Glenn Hoddle, Glenn, Hoddle came Glenn Hoddle came in. How was he? Proper football man. <laughs> so... I think that season we drew so many games. We lost hardly any and drew so many games. It was really weird, but we just couldn't score goals. Uh, and I just think Glenn was trying to coach, a uh, manage a premiership team. We weren't a premiership team. We were a, we were a championship team. And I think that's where the difference was. You know, He was expecting us to be like premiership players, and we weren't. We were championship players, and we just couldn't, couldn't score goals. And I don't know what the stats were, but we drew so many games, it was ridiculous. And uh, What was going on late in training? Please, please, please. He used to join in, didn't he? Yeah, he used to yeah, join in training, that. and he'd always try and put one in the top corner from outside the box, and the lads would be sliding in, <laughs> trying to smash him. And he did it one morning, and he got it on the edge of the box, and he stuck it in the top, I don't know who was in goal, he stuck it in the top corner. It was like, no, you a pin yeah. drop on the pitch. It's like me at Brackley. <laughs> <laughs> Did the lads, were the lads having him though? Did the lads play him? He's another one. Is I got an okay with him, interested. but I don't know. I think it was mixed. Some yeah. did, some didn't. It was mixed. He divides opinion a bit, doesn't he? What would be the reason why they wouldn't, Jode? He's a bit strange though, isn't he? I mean, obviously he's come out with some incredible comments and he that have been... He, well, yeah, yes, he did have his ways. It was slightly odd. I was sat in a physio room once, injured, I had a bag of ice on my knee, and he'd come in and he put his hand on my leg and was like... So what exactly is the matter? I just think I'm about to start laughing here because I think yeah. I've got a big bag of ice yeah, on my yeah, knee. Yeah. My knees are in. It's, it's me knee, Glenn. Yeah. Me knee. <laughs> <laughs> but he had his funny ways. But uh, hey, like I said, I got on with most people, and uh, I just as long as I did my job and got on with it, it was okay. So that was that was the season with Wolves. How did he get on that season? Then that was the first one, the championship. We, I think, we just missed out on the playoffs. So yeah, and you played all that season. Captain, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then, uh, and was it the following season then when Mick came in, or was it another year after that? Well, yeah, it was the following season. Glenn Oddle with uh, Stuart Gray. Oh, yeah, he was brilliant. Stuart Gray really got on well with him. Yeah, and one day Glenn Oddle never came back. It was pre-season, just never came in. Yeah. That was it, done. Didn't say, come in and say, "Cheers, lads." You know, you worked really hard for just me. Just never, just never turned up. And we're like, well, this is a bit. <laughs> 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 what should we do today, then, boys? Yeah, I'll take turning. <laughs> So how, how was it being the captain of, the, of that team then? But obviously by then, Dennis Irwin had gone, Ince had gone. So was it an easier dressing room for you to, to lead? Then who else was in that dressing room? Was Alex Reid still there? Alex was there. Alex was quality. Yeah. yeah. And they, Alex, Alex had had problems when he had Sunderland, but yes. he would like, he sorted his life out a little bit. Yeah, and I got then, really well with Alex. When I first went to Sunderland, Alex, he would hammer me every single day. He'd he hammer everybody in training. He would like, hammer me every single thing, pass. Think, yeah. Everything I did, he'd hammer me. To the day I had to just stand up for myself. I was a young boy, so, you know, yeah. and he's in the first thing. I just stood up for myself and said, look, Al, just, I told him where to go. And that was it. Ever since then, never did. Else. I love that though. Yeah, there's a lot about him as well. It, like, there's good. a lot of people like that. We, I mean, we had characters or something like that who they would they would get on. I mean, there was a lot of that in training, wasn't it? Peter Reed was like that as well. Everybody would get on everyone's case, but the young lads could easy shout back. I remember having a bit of fun. Phil Gray was there. I remember having to go. Nicky Summerby, I had a big bust up with Chris Making and stuff. It is a young lad, but they'd all take it. And Peter Reed used to like it. He'd be like, "Good lad, Sam." I remember, I having, you, I remember yeah. Nicky Summerby elbowing Juxy in the face. Yes. And I've lost my head, like, you know, shouting across, threatening to chin Nicky Summer being all that bat and goal kicking off. And then Peter Reid afterwards, like, love all that. Because he loved it, didn't he? He loved it. it, it, so, it, was. it and he would join in, and he would try and smash people. It was quite a good culture, whereas everyone, like, everyone could have a scrap, but everyone was still fine. It's it? missing a little bit now as well, you know. I think, like, I'm lucky. I've got, even just the other day in training, I had a couple of my senior players going at it. Um, and I just stand back. And obviously, there's obviously a line that you can't cross. Yeah. But to a point, they're getting on each other. But there's such men that afterwards, yeah, nothing, one of yeah. them's going, like, joking with him, going, like, we're just about to go for food. And he's going, I'll be waiting for you in the car park. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they're like laughing and joking. Really and then he's a, he's a, um, he's the, the other one then's getting food. He's like, like grabbing his food and he's chatting away. He's like, oh, you got something to say now? You don't have to say anything 20 minutes ago. And yeah. like, but they were brilliant, you know? And I just think like, of course it's that competitive side, yeah. isn't it? Of course you want the best for each other. Cause deep down that is what it is. We want to be the best team and we want to strive forward. And like, and as long as it doesn't roll over yeah. and continue, the key, then yeah. it's all right. Yeah. yeah. I've seen punch. Yeah. Via Ganera, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't have known him. Via Ganera. Yeah. So he flew in on somebody in training. He was a centre midfielder, flew in on someone. It was a stupid challenge. And uh, the lad's head butted him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and head butted him to bed. Head head butt- yeah. head you know that, you know that line I was three, talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was injured. So, oh, sorry, sorry. so I was injured and uh, <laughs> he's coming back and I was just coming with a massive oh slash across his face. And we're like, you know, because he took the mick and he went in too hard in training. Yeah. He would do. Yeah. And it was, and the lad started going, ain't taking it anymore. And yeah. just nutted him. <laughs> <But> <laughs> that is the Can you divulge who yeah. it was, Joe, or not really? Who nutted him? Oh, I'm just trying to think of his name. I can picture him. I can't think of his name. It's, it wasn't someone, it wasn't like a player that was in the first team playing. So yeah. So, Wolves again, it. the following season. So, you went, he reached the playoffs. When did he get promotion with Wolves then? Under Mick McCarthy. Were you there? Did you were right? Yeah, there? So yeah. When, he skipped, so skipped ahead a little bit. So you were. So when Glenn Holder went, Mick came in. Yes. He, there wasn't much of a squad there at all at that point. No, Remember he, coming out, he yeah. inherited not many players. He had to do a bit of wheeling and dealing, yeah. didn't he? And that's, that's when he kind of started. Isn't? That's yeah. where I was quite lucky. Went and got young players who he could get reasonably that, cheap. You were one of them. You yeah, I come kind of in the, the second lot in the January. Yeah. But Matt in, Jarvis was but in the summer. Got, yes. Yeah, Kites, Matt Jarvis, um, Kevin Foley, yeah. players like that, really oh, good players. Wow, all went on to have a really great good career. Great recruitment, that, isn't it? But he brought in, say, Kites from Grays, Jarvis from Gillingham, Foles from Luton, didn't he? So Sylvan. Sylvan from Plymouth at the time. Wow. Um, George Ellicobi from, where did George come from? Um, Colchester, was it? Yeah, yeah. And me yeah. from Luton yeah. as Looking well. Looking back now, when you look at that, that's Incredible recruitment, isn't it? That's it's like exciting for yeah. you that as well, Julian. So you're captain. What age are you now, then? So you're, you're just he was the oldest by miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we, had such, we had such a young squad, and you weren't yeah. obviously that old, were you? But how but brilliant that must have to been lead that. Yeah. yeah, so you're long, yeah, so you're early thirties, and you got all these young lads coming in, which must be amazing for you. That's oh, great. Yeah. yeah. And how, how did you find Jordy then? When well, he came before in? it was a bit of a strange one because we we'll touched it now, but I came in the January, and you would Mick had sent you out on loan for a short period beforehand. So that, that was that was that was a real strange. Thing. I remember the lad speaking about it, saying like it was crazy. Why? Yeah, well, Gary Breen there at the same time. Yeah, not older centre half. Uh, and he? he just put in Darren Ward as well. Darren Ward. I yeah. think he brought Darren Ward in to replace me. Yeah. So you went to Stoke. Went on Stoke for a month, and uh, I think Stoke played Wolves and Stoke beat Wolves. I wasn't allowed to play, but Stoke yeah. beat Wolves. And I think I came back literally a week later. Yeah. And that was it. I stayed in, how, the, how I stayed in the team for five years after that. How weird is that, though? How do you, how do you cope with that? Because that's a bit odd, isn't it? You're suddenly the captain, then you get sent out one look. And you'd had Mick at Sunderland? Yes. So. Oh, only short oh, period of time. Period, it was okay. at, right at the end. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's one of them things. I just thought, well, this, my time's up and that's uh, time to move on. And, uh, you know, you, Stoke... You, you, you thought at that time, this is me, Wolves. I thought, yeah, I, you know. I, yes, I wanted to stay at Wolves, but... The manager don't want you there. What can you do? Yeah. So time to move on. I went to Stoke. I knew Tony Pulis from Bournemouth. Bournemouth, oh, what was he like? He was he was old school, but he kind of suited you? my game. He'd have had yeah. you playing left wing back. <laughs> <laughs> suited my game. He didn't want you know. He didn't want me to get the ball out from the back yeah, and like, be playing you know tiny passes. He didn't want that. He just wanted me to go in and just do what I'd done for my whole career, and it suited me. And I you know I enjoyed it, and I'd happily sign. I was about to sign, you know, and. Uh, it was an hour's drive each day, which was absolutely fine from where I live. I guess I was literally about to sign, and uh, Wolves were like, uh, "Can you come back?" Yeah. So the lads weren't I, doing great at Wolves then. It was, I know that obviously they got beat by Stoke. But missing the skipper, weren't they? Yeah. I just, I just realised that we missed a season here, haven't we? Because then you get to the playoffs the year before under Mick. Yes, yes, because yeah, that was we before that was before um, you went on loan because you West, played West Brom, didn't you? So talk about it. that playing West Brom in the playoff semi-finals, huge derby, arguably yeah, bigger we than we weren't the, ready the for Sunderland promotion. One. Wayne Hennessy had just <laughs> been given that uh, his debut in that yeah, yeah, Wayne in Hennessy, the second yeah. leg of that uh, the Matt Murray had just got is it Matt yeah, he got, injured. got injured yeah so it, we weren't quite ready yeah. they beat us they beat us at home and they beat us away good atmosphere in those games though yeah massive okay. yeah really good did Molyneux you first or Molyneux you first Kev Phillips up front <laughs> Was it? Yeah. He scored. He scored. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you marked him out the game. <laughs> He's got one, did he? I can picture oh. it now. Oh. Yeah. He always scored, though, didn't he? Always scored. Oh, did but I did, score. I did score at the Hawthorne, so yeah. I, did. I was happy I scored there. So How did you find him against Kev Phillips? 
Because oh, he's very different. Yeah, hard. So, you know, I used to prefer just playing against the big, big lads, which yeah. I'd have a good battle with. It was the small lads that would, you know, back into you and make it really it's difficult. Hard, yeah. You try and jump over the top, it's a foul, isn't it? Yeah. So they'd back into you and want to get the ball into their feet, and that's what Kev did. And yeah. that's what was really difficult to mark against. He was quality. So where are we now? Are we so, so going back now, so then you've been out on loan, so you've lost in the playoff semi finals, yeah. you've come back in the pre season, you've gone out on loan to Stoke. I can't think of the time yeah, period that, of that's where the, it that's was. That's the timeline, yeah, because I can't remember the Premier League oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> Gary, it was me and Gary Breen in that playoff game. In playoff game. And Mick McCarthy taking Gary Breen everywhere. So he was always going to be first choice. Yeah. And then he brought Darren Ward in. So that must have been a few months into the season. Oh, must, literally, must have been straight away because I went on loan but just but after the. But before, before you went on loan, this is like a bit of a, a tale that gets told around Compton and. And Wallen, you that you played in a League Cup game the day before you went, and you scored this outrageous volley against Bradfield. We'll have to try and get a clip it. of it. I've just, just looked at it there. It's great. It's insane. It's great. Talk straight because you knew you were going to. I was going. Uh, Mick McCarthy already pulled me in in the afternoon. and Said, um, "Look, there's a game tonight. I want you going on loan. Do you want to play?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do want to play because this could be my last game Wolves, yeah. I ever play at Wolves." So that's why my celebration wasn't quite, uh, you know, as ecstatic as I wanted it to be. Because I thought all I could think of is I'm going on loan tomorrow. Yeah, I've just smashed this ball in the top corner, and it was Daz Williams well. as a centre half. <laughs> 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 yeah, what's a What happened with the celebration then? You obviously oh, smashed you do it. A bit, do a bit, of yeah, com- yeah, yeah. do a bit of commentary on it, Potter, Sam. Yeah, you just walked off. Everybody's jumping on you. It's Potter, there. Connor Cody there. No, no. I look, I look like, does he look like him? Who's that? I think Connor Cody would have been about ten at that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great what strike, a isn't strike it? Keeper's not is. moved. Keeper just watched it. Pot, wow. Yeah, Potter's jumped on you. You're looking a bit shocked, Jack. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> you wasted that. You needed a better celebration. You thought it was a clearance. Yeah, but in the back of my mind was, I'm going on loud tomorrow. Yeah, I'd, have made the, I'd have made the most of that. So yeah, yeah. I'd have got right now. in his face in the technical <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were you doing there? Is that from the corner as well? What were you doing there? Like, yes, it must have been, yeah. Never went up on your way back, on your way yeah, back. Yeah, and it got recycled and went back out for a cross and then just came back in. Great strike. And I thought, you didn't oh, want to I'm bring it down. Smashing it. No, I ain't <laughs> yeah. bring that down. Why bring it? I'm setting it off. Once yeah, I'm bring it down, just smash it as hard as I can. Great call. Yeah, Could so have gone over the stand or it's in <laughs> Asda Car Park or the top <laughs> corner. So we're back, we're back up to pace now. So all the young lads came in yeah. for Mick then. You come back, started to gain a bit of moment, momentum that season. I remember I came in in the January and we just missed out on the playoffs that season. But you yeah. could tell that we were. Building something. Yeah, it was good. Um, young lads, they needed that little bit of time to adapt. And uh, the thing is, with young lads, they do adapt really, really quickly. Yeah. It was a great team. I yeah. think it's, Andy it's Keogh as well. I forgot about Keogh yes. was in there. Yeah. Good player as well. Super so fit. Come from, come from Scunthorpe. Yeah, I remember him, yeah. Um, Super fit. Carl Emery would have come in at some point Emery, as well. Yeah. Sylvan, but Chris Ubalumo came in. So then that, that following summer then, they brought in a few difference makes. Yeah. Like Dave Jones, Chris yes. Ubalumo. It really added to the team. So that I? season, you you knew it was going to be. We've got a good season, yeah. It was good. You, we just you, got off to an absolute flyer, didn't we? Did you we? know you were captain, Jody, from the start of the season as well? Did well, you know you were going to be captain? Yes, and I this season we got promoted. Yeah, yeah. I broke my foot in the first day, game of the season, didn't I? Yeah. I, was, I was thinking this is going to be. We had a good preseason. This is. I was thinking this is going to be a great season, and I broke my foot. I had some new boots and I had an extra stud along in there. Plymouth um, at home. I don't know. Who it was again. No. Game. Yeah. And, uh, six literally, inch, six inch metal studs, obviously. And I've literally jumped, and as I've jumped, I've just felt my metal yeah. yeah. So fifteen weeks, I was out. No and, man. And got when you got fit again, straight back in. No, I got fit, and Ste- just at that time, Stephen came as well, didn't he? Yes. So Steers would have been playing centre back. So what's the centre half pairing when you weren't there? Steers and uh, played alongside. It was Christoph Bear, but I don't know if he came afterwards. A bit later, yeah, maybe. So that season, you've ended up. Winning promotion. Well, they started to slip at Christmas time. Yeah, we had and a right then, panic. Up. We were yeah. top by quite a bit, weren't we? I remember you talking about this, yeah. yeah. And, and they started to slip, and I'm thinking, this is just perfect time for me. Yeah. yeah. And I'll get the experience. The yeah. 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 Let's get this back, lads. You're welcome. Everyone relax. You're welcome, everyone lads. Calm down. You know, you just want to be involved because it's everyone's doing yeah. so well. And you just want to be involved. Yeah, and, I got, and I managed to just get in in January. And that was it. And then you in and stayed, stayed, stayed we, had, we had a horrible one. I remember we lost to Blues. We lost to Plymouth at home, 1 0. And but luckily there was Reading and who was the other team up there? Was it Birmingham maybe? But they were they weren't doing great either. So our gap never really diminished yeah, a little bit. But then we say after January we kicked right on again, didn't we? We had during we had a crisis holiday, didn't we? In 
Where do we go? La Manga. Places <laughs> holiday in La Manga. La Manga. Hey, that'll sort out. I've got, got another turn for that. I've got another turn for that. I've got another turn for that. I've got crisis we, uh, holiday. We came back and we lost the Plymouth one. <laughs> 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 That's what I used to do with Peter Reed. Yeah, all the we time. We were brilliant up to Christmas. We'd yeah. go f- to... Um, where did we go? Bottom Hall. Bottom Hall for yeah. like a... Three or four days, and we come back and we'd be horrendous. Yeah, yeah. We? yeah because we had four, had four days on the lash. They used to take you away for it, but regardless of what your family was doing, like a week before, oh, yeah, we've got to Morton Hall for five days. Like, just let, let your families know. <laughs> yeah. And do you remember, we were doing really good in the Premiership. And uh, we came back and we couldn't we couldn't win a game. <laughs> we couldn't win a game for a four or five games. You know what we need, lads? We need another trip to Morton Hall, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we were brilliant up to that point, and that was it. I used to think every year, oh, here we go. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was an exciting finish to the season, wasn't it? Some big games. Yeah. It was the QPR game at home where we sealed it. That was, obviously, you'd experienced that before, but for me, I'd that never experienced anything like that. It was an incredible atmosphere, wasn't it? It was. was, it was, it was scored. You think as a player, you kind of, you play that season, you know it's going well, and you're, you know, you're top of the, top of the league, <sighs> but you always, always have those small doubts. So yeah, oh, God, I hope we... I hope yeah. we can do it. I hope it works out, you know, because it's so easy you can just slip and lose a game and that's it. You end up in the playoffs and, and then you miss out. Yeah. But uh, we didn't. We kept the momentum and uh, the boys were great. We had some good players and a uh, good you, young team. It was uh, just the right time. You ended up as captain lifting the lifting the trophy that ended us. Can you, can you remember that at all or not? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. He's painted it. <laughs> I do remember. He's painted yeah. it. But I also remember at the same, same time I was trying to get a new contract. So Your um, contract was up? My contract was up. Yeah, but you've, just, I, you've just been captain. You just won't uh, you'd think. push into the press. So it was like a double-edged sword. So I was absolutely, you know, it was fantastic. And in the back of my mind, all I could think of is, you've not, offered, you've not even offered me a contract yet. And they were That's waiting bad. to see uh, if I was could play in the Premiership. I played five more you years course, after yeah. that, and I think four were in the Premiership. And you had to deal with Jez Mox as well. Oh. <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> It was a nightmare. I'd be arguing over an extra thousand pounds. I'd be, and it would be a nightmare. And I'd, I used to hate it. I hate you it. You did your own stuff, didn't you, Joe? Um, what did you? Yeah, that's another story for well, another why, podcast. Why is that, that's interesting, though. Why, why did you not have an agent? Why did I what? Sorry. Why did you not have? Well, I used to, I, in the end, I used a PFA because I had, I had a, um, I had a agent, and uh, got. And when I first moved to Wolves, I wanted, I'd, all I said to the agent was. How much money did you make out of my contract? Oh, I don't know. And I think that's pretty fair. How much yeah. money did you make out of me? They just wouldn't tell me. And so I went to the Wolves and said, how much money did you pay for my contract? And they wouldn't tell me. And I went, right, <laughs> you, you don't. Point, yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't want anything no to do with you. And from that day on, I just used the PFA. Yeah. And they were good. Was, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Could, have made more, could you have made more money, you think, if you'd used I don't know. Because I was an older player... I always seem to be battling for one year, one year, one year. I'd never get anything else. If, there yeah. you go, there's one year. I'd have to prove myself every single... Yeah. That last four years, I had to prove myself every but single at this year. Stage, what, you're 32? I would have been, yeah. Yeah. So they'll so think... You see from oh, their point of view a little bit, can't you? Well, was, well, there's no loyalty in football, though, is no, there? They're not no, going to no, go, no. well, Jordy's done brilliant, he's <clears> got his promotion, he's been the captain, let's, let's give him two or three years. That's, it's never going to happen, is huh? it? If you're one year... Yeah, every time. Old. Yeah. I remember a bit of advice you gave me, Joe. It always sticks with me when I was in contract talks and started to speak to you. Or Joe was one of the most, well, he was the most experienced player. Scott always speaks to him about these sorts of things. I remember you saying to me, well, I said to you, I said, like, I know so and so is going to be on so much money. He's going to be on that much money. I feel like I'm a bit undervalued. And you said to me, there'll always be people on more money than you. That's football. Yeah. You just got to be happy. Don't think about anyone else. As long as you're happy with that amount, Sign it. Yeah. Don't think about what people are on. You've got to bring it back to yourself. And then if you're happy to sign it, just get it done. And that's something for the rest of my career, which I took in, just try to not think about other people and if you do it, what's he going to do for me and my family? Right. I'm happy with that. Because you're otherwise you spend your time being jealous. Yeah, exactly. Ego, isn't it? Ego. There's actually I'm fine, I'm doing really well, I've got a really good wage. My family are really happy. Yeah. Obviously it was all resolved. You're back in the Premier League, captain, scoring goals. And I think you were PFA Player of the Year that year, am I right? Supporters Player Supporters of the Year. Supporters Player of the Year, sorry. Player of the year. PFA Player, that would have, <laughs> have been some accolades. Yeah, just, yeah, that would have been, yeah, just because we were talking about, 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 about PFA, sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Supporters Player, player of the Year. So what, what a year, what a time for you that must have been. It was good, you know, it was it was going right. I enjoyed playing football, you know. I, I was found as a centre-half. I know I got slower as I got older, but I got more experience. I used to find that, used to find it quite, you know, it'd be quite comfortable in the games and I found it quite easy. You know, the Premiership, you'd 
was easier to read the championship and like, I always find when we played FA Cup games against a lower division team and they were so unpredictable because you'd be marking your, your, your forward and all of a sudden the defender would just smash it over your head and I'm thinking oh, I'm just chasing you know chasing yeah, yeah. balls whereas when you're in the premiership all the players in front of you and it was just it felt comfortable it felt good you know and it, and, it, and I could cope even you know fans were like oh yeah he's too slow now he's 33, 34 but it never mattered because I just used yeah, to read the game. You're bossing me around in front of you. Yeah. I don't do but this, I don't do that. Dip, get in here, get in here, get on the forwards <laughs> tours. Yeah, but, but that's what I'd say, that's what I say to the kids now when I'm coaching, yeah, as a centre half, boss everyone around in front of you and do as little as you possibly can do. <laughs> get him that's to do all that running do. so that ball doesn't even get to your to your player. Did, did yeah. you notice the difference at all in terms of the difference in the Premier League? Because obviously playing in it in the early 2000s and so now playing it in 2009, 10, 11, those sorts of years, a lot more foreign players is when Man City started spending all the money on the likes of Rubinho, Adebayor, all that. Did you notice a significant difference in style of play, types of players you're up against? Do you know what? I always just found it really quick. You know, from that very first I'm just trying to think of my first I still can't think of my first premiership game <laughs> but I remember playing that very first game and thinking oh my god this is so quick yeah. it's like from the champion, championship was, it's a great division and it's really really physical which suited me but when you know as I went to the premiership it was super super quick and there wasn't like a I could never found a split second to just relax it was like you've got to be on it I don't Men- think mentally never, tired mentally, after the game. Yeah, mentally. And I just, and that never changed, you know, and it was always, I'd always look at my games in terms of, right, who am I marking and how am I going to mark him? So, and they always seem to be, all the centre forwards always seem to be really, really good and uh, it never changed my whole career. You know, it was how, how are you living your life then, Jordan? You're 33, playing in the Premier League, obviously, that is completely changed from the Peter Reid days. I presume you're not having eight cans of McEwen on the way back from a <laughs> no. match and all that now. So, like, what? So you're eating, eating all the right stuff, drinking well, stretching all the time, yeah. doing everything you can because you've had injuries as well. So you're living like yeah, and I think yeah, but I think you have to do that as a footballer now. You know, now, now, now is, then, yeah, now then, you know, weren't like when I was back at Cambridge and players would come in a stone overweight, and yeah, I'd be like, yeah. oh, what? <laughs> yeah, even now I'd be like, what's going on here? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd eat really well. I would just, you know be really strict, but I wouldn't be that so strict that I couldn't you know Enjoy have a drink you. after a yeah, game yeah, on a Saturday, yeah, providing I didn't have a midweek. So, yeah, I was super strict on everything I did. I'd, I enjoyed going in the gym every day. I'd be in nice and early, do the gym, train hard and, um, yeah, relax. Not, not absolute model professional, yeah, honestly. Absolutely. Amazing, amazing even, for... Even as a kid, though, you were like you were quite good like that, weren't you, I think? You were that was a good professional at Sunderland, I wouldn't yeah. have, For a young lad at Sunderland, you sort of lived probably a better lifestyle than some of the other young lads. But the, and the reason was I was... It was the fear of failure which pushed me to... Push and push and push and, yeah. and do the best I could. And I thought, wow, if I miss, I was so many passing, so many players not grasp it and take it and really try. And you know, I'll be going and you know, we talked about Neil Wayne, right? Great lad, good footballer. I'll be trying to drag him in the gym every day after yeah. training, and he just wouldn't have it. And I'm thinking, well, why? Right, why? why? Because why you need this. It's really good foresight, though. Yeah. Joe, to have that because there's so many of them now, and I like I'm in and around it, and I'm watching, and I'm doing. You could just be doing that little bit more, and you could just be doing that. So at that young age, for you to recognise that and know that that's what you needed to do to achieve was that's, that's still like, a lot of credit goes to you for that. And that's why yeah. Jordy says now he reached his potential. Yeah. Whereas I think there's not many people, not many footballers who can say they absolutely no reached their maximum. No, and I, and I, I think would say you probably did as well, Dave. Wouldn't I you think, as well? but I, I learned. So I genuinely learned yeah, so much off Jody. Jody. Like for us young lads, he was like the perfect role model. Yeah. I think Joe does himself a disservice at times saying that. He wasn't that good a footballer. He was an unbelievable yeah. footballer. He played in the Premier League. You don't, you, you don't do that by not being a top, top player. But at the same time, you did get make the absolute best out of your career. And every morning I used to go in, you'd be stood on that cable machine. You know, the, <laughs> the gym, mate. Just, Slept honestly, there. mate, just wait every Slept single morning. Like, prep, there. wait after training, into all the stretching, things like that. And you talk about looking at strikers and that day before the game, making sure it's not just in the gym he's looking after himself. He's getting his preparation right for who he's facing on the... Um, on the Saturday recovery, just absolutely living your right life in the right way. And that definitely rubbed off. When you, I mean, there's no coincidence that that group of young lads who came in, we're all 21, 22, all pretty much in the same year group, about seven or eight of us. I think there's no, there's no, it's no coincidence that all of those lads went on to have good careers yeah. when we had the likes of you. We didn't have any older. I think you were the old, like the only one, weren't you? I think you had a couple like Carl Emery who's a couple of years older. Yeah. Chris Ullum came in, didn't yeah, Chris he? Chris Ullum. But we, oh. had, we, had, we had absolutely no... 
no dickheads at all, did we? No. And we were learning. We had no pros. older pros who were going to lead us in the wrong direction. The one person we looked up to was Joe. And when you saw him doing all his work, that definitely rubbed up and uh, rubbed off on all the lads. And they've all been good pros as well. I think yeah. you look at their careers. Oh, definitely. What amazes me though is like I like to think some of them qualities I've got at an older age now. Not all, of, but but <laughs> maybe a couple. But to to have that, I certainly didn't have that at, at a young age. To have, I just think that's like incredible to have those qualities to be able to push yourself, to recognise that other people have failed. I just think that's brilliant. I think like... I didn't think I was good enough. That was the problem. Uh, when I first started, when I first yeah. went to counter, I thought, I'm not good enough. I was, honestly thought this could just fall apart in within months. Because you hadn't been the superstar, though, either. you hadn't been this kid no. who's come through the academy everyone's talking about. You could have quite easily come through at Sunderland and still had yeah. the same career, but your mindset would be completely it might different. It different because you've come, through, you've come through Sunderland's School of Excellence or Sunderland Academy where you've been a star and everybody's talking about you. And Jordy's coming in this and thinking, I'm not good enough for Cambridge, I'm not good enough for Sunderland. And so you've got it. He's, you've absolutely. And that's why I'm so kind of on the fence with all the academies with the the young lads at seven or eight because they get the ones that do manage to get through at that early stage. It's kind of in them that well they're good enough. Their yeah. mum and mum and dads have put it in them that they're good yeah. enough and they're going to be the next biggest thing. That uh, you know then they don't have that mentality yeah. of still wanting to struggle. You know that first year they get you get that contract after an academy. I think that's the most difficult to then get a second year and a third yeah, yeah, year. Absolutely. Yeah. And because you almost think that's it, I've done it, I've got my first yes. contract, but that's where you that's have to double start. down on your work, isn't yeah. it? And I, again, no, I, I marvel at it just because I see so many of them. They get that contract and they're like, brilliant, get my wash bag. Get my sliders, I'm off. Like, brilliant. Thanks. I <laughs> call, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton wash bag. Yeah, I call <laughs> it the, the wash bag brigade. And I'm Did, just, I think I'm sure you just get given that when you got your first year abroad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so true, you scored, he scored, in the, he scored um, against Sunderland at the stadium of light as well. Did he get a good reception from Sunderland fans yeah. when he went back? Yeah, I did. And that's, um, I'd been back a couple of times, but I was subbed the first time. And then that was the, I think it was the second time I went back. And uh, you scored. Yeah. Scored. Did he celebrate? Yes. I used yeah. to think, well, why wouldn't I yeah, celebrate? Good, I see these players that yeah, can't I celebrate, agree. and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, out of respect, don't celebrate. But I'm thinking, yeah. I've just scored in I, the Premiership. I'm buzzing. I need to win. Yeah. But it's insincere when you don't celebrate because, like, you're, I know it's fine to be respectful. But celebrate. No, I don't think anyone's going to be annoyed at you. Damage like, limitation, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the worry, it's the wrath, isn't it, after yeah, what they're going to get, and then they want to be seen, isn't it? Yeah. And you go in the, and you go in the dress rafters, go, get in, brilliant. Like, just celebrate. Oh, totally. You scored a goal. Like, it's buzzing. So, yeah. coming towards the end of your career now then. So we, so, we had three years in the Premier League. We got relegated. Brilliant. Kind of wheels fell off a little bit at the end, didn't they? Yeah. Sort of Mick went. TC was put in charge at the end. I think they had Steve Bruce Terry. lined up, didn't they, to to take over. Didn't quite happen. Terry Connor got the job. And, yeah, we ended up getting relegated. Then it was all changed at the football club, wasn't it? And, obviously, were you out of contract at this point? It was. Again? again, I was out of contract. Uh, and, T, and TC, he was, like, standing, wasn't he? Um, and he said, if I get the manager's job, I'll sign you straight away. I'm thinking, great, you know. Come on, Terry, get the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check into uh, sports every two well, But I, I had an injury that, just at that end point, so I wasn't playing. But I was just back. So as the season finished, I was just back from injury. And then they brought Sol back in. And um, so I'd done all my pre-season, everything. I was fit. And all, you get all your stats come through, and I was as fit as I'd ever been. So I was as fit as I was at 37, as I was at 30. And I did the first day's training and I went to see him and I just asked him, I said, look, you know, my lad's in hospital. So I, you know, so you, you're going to Ireland on a pre-season tour. Go on, talk, 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 yeah, so your, boy, your boy's in hospital, is that Toby? Yeah, yeah so time. Toby had leukaemia yeah. and yeah, it was just a crap time. He was in hospital yeah. for six months, basically. Club supportive. As much as they can. Well, it was that time, it was the end of the season. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, so I was away from the club and uh, so I've come back and gone in to see him that first day and said, look, you know, you go away at the weekend. Are you going to give me a fair crack at this? Because at the end of the season, he'd said, come in, I'll give you a two-week <laughs> two <week> trial. <laughs> still, still trying. <laughs> oh, my God. I played 500 oh, games. My. I'll do a two-week <laughs> trial again. Oh, That's <laughs> got to be a wind-up, surely. Yeah. You know, this is me, you know, going into my 10th year <laughs> yeah. at Wolves, by the way. Yeah. And uh, oh, so I've gone in to up. see him that first day. <laughs> yeah. What, what, you, what are you expecting to see? If you're not, you've seen, must have seen oh, him a million exactly. times. What are you expecting? You know me or you don't, that's it. <laughs> and, he, and I said, look, you're going to give me a fair crack because my lad's in hospital and I'm not going to yeah. Ireland if you aren't going to give me... If I'm just going to go there and then at the end of it, you're going to go, oh, we don't want you. And he went, no, I'm not signing you. And okay. that was literally the end of my career. That, that you know, they went and signed a lad called Margaret or, and he never even played a game of football. And I'm, I'm bitter about it. 
Because yeah. I, bl- I don't necessarily blame him. I blame the club for not, you know, they ring me up going, Jez Moxley's ring me up going, oh, what's happened? Why are you leaving? Da, da, da. You know, I'm thinking, you're kidding me. If so, I would have signed for pennies. I would have, you know, I would have signed for virtually, I wouldn't have signed for nothing, but yeah. I'd have signed like a, a minimal contract yeah. to play. And uh, so I really blame... Sa- you really settled. Obviously, your boy's in hospital, but you're settled in the area. I wasn't going to move. I didn't yeah. want to move. It wasn't even on the cards. You know, I didn't want it. It was no option. So that was the... Time it's not like you're negotiating, Joe. You're making it clear. Look, I want to be here. Yeah. You're not going then in there going, right, there. you know, I've been here 10 years. I want this. I want that. Yeah, there's nothing. They could have said, look, we give you a... Oh, shoot, where were we? Championship? I don't know. Championship, yeah. Championship, yeah. Championship, Championship just been relegated. Yeah, I'd have signed, I'd have signed for a grand a week. I'd, you know, it was simple as that. And they didn't. And they says, so I blame the club for not even saying, oh, let's just sign him for that. Yeah. Let's just sign him. And then if he plays, he plays. Or, He's not game out alone. I'd have still been there every day. And I'd have, I would have forced myself into no. that team. It would have been... The, um, didn't know about your boy as well at the, t- at the time. Uh, I mean, I don't he would have, he would have, yeah, he would have. <laughs> I remember the lads were, were raging at the time oh, again because of everything you'd done for the football club. But yeah. the championship, we know what British football's like. Yeah. And I think Stoller sold back and come in, had loads of good ideas how he wanted to play, but it was never he didn't it was never gonna work the way he wanted to play at a club like Wolves in the championship because it was very much you have the ball, we'll sit in our shape, be hard to beat and try and counter and try doing that at Molyneux yeah. when you're yeah. playing against so especially, I remember we played, who we play at Molyneux? Um, some lower teams, like, who had just come up from League One, and they're absolutely bopping us, and we just sat in our shape waiting yeah. for, and the crowd was going mental. But going back to Jody, yeah, the, the lads weren't happy at all, and I think it was the beginning of the end, I think, for Stola Solbach, and because he went and then brought in five or six foreigners, didn't he, on decent money as well. There were some good ones in there, brought in Brackery Sacco, yeah, yeah. who, who did well, but I don't think he ever really had the lads on board after that, 100%. Yeah, I th- I and he, yeah. he lasted till January. But yeah, he's, he's, he's your mate, isn't he? He's your mate. You know, he's having a horrendous time. You're thinking he's, ser- he's been a great servant at the club. Like, look after him. And you'll play. 100%. And he played. 100%. Yeah, mind, yeah, mind mind that. Even, if, even if you don't start it's the not, season. Yeah, it's not a sympathy one. He, he'll add value. I genuinely so think how, I could have made a, a, an impact. So how, how are you and your family at, coping with that, at that time then? I mean, that must got to be... Well, I've made that decision. Terrible. I'm like, I'm done. That's it. I'll just call it a day. You know, I've got more... Bigger, bigger things bigger. to, I mean, that to must deal put with. Things in perspective as well. Yeah, it does, and it was, uh, you know, it was a really tough time. You know, what do you do? You either yeah. cope and get on with it, or you just crumble. And uh, you had no, cho- you have no choice. Basically, you just get on with it. But like you were, you were a year off your testimonial, yeah. weren't you? And you got a testimonial. Got so, testimonial, yeah. how did that work? They signed me on ninety pound a week <laughs> <laughs> in the championship. Yeah. The worst. We we'll put that as a headline. The worst. Championship contract in history. <laughs> 90 90 pound pound pound. I think that was the absolute minimal wage you could give a footballer. It, the, yeah. I, I, I think, think that's what yeah, it was. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was Jez, was it? Kind of said, well, we want he, you. So, he, so at least they said that we want you to get your testimonial. Which I never understood. If Jez would have said, I'll give you a grand if you go in and train every day and yeah. try and get in a team, I'd have gone and done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no. <laughs> so how did that 90, 90 quid so a week. He, and I'm thinking, I ain't going in for any for that. So he rang you when they offered you 90 He said, we will give you But they just pounds. said, we'll sign you on a contract so yeah, that you can get to your testimonial. So, you know, I'm grateful that they did that to get me to my testimonial. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they thought. So you finally yeah. retired. So it's 2013, you retired. And you got this, you had your testimonial. Obviously, you're Sunderland v Wolves in your testimonial. I played in that. Yeah. I remember it was it was great. That was, it was good, it was wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. Really good. Um, all the proceeds went to Birmingham Children's Hospital. Is that because of Toby? Yes. Can, yes. Tell, can you tell us a little bit the story of Toby? Is that all right? Are you uh, that? Yes, it's fine. Um, it is tough. Um, he had some funny spots on him, and I just couldn't figure out what it was. And he wasn't feeling too well, and he was, and he had. Bits of blood coming from his nose, and it was a it was a concern. And um, Shelley gone down to Bournemouth for the weekend, yeah. and she just rang me up saying something some yeah. I'd been to the cinema with the boys, and I'd, I was like, right, I'd just shoot straight down to Bournemouth, and uh, went into the hospital, and they said, you know, he's got leukemia. I didn't even know what leukemia was. Yeah. Thinking, what the hell's leukemia? And his dog's cancer. And uh, all I could think of is he going to die? That's all I could think of. And as it happens, the strain he had of leukemia was was. If you're going to get some a good strain of leukemia, that's the one to get, and it's a 98 percent chance of um, success. Yeah, and the treatment was fantastic, and uh, yeah, he's a normal kid now, and you'd never know the difference. Amazing. I was yeah. I was Toby now. He is 13. 13. Yeah. I, mem- I remember getting a text about I can't remember where our like Sunderland WhatsApp group, 
I remember everybody was absolutely devastated because the sort of lad you are as well. I remember thinking, oh my goodness. And all your proceeds from that testimony. Not all, I, it was a percentage. Yeah, yeah, I did a percentage to the Birmingham them. Children's Hospital. It was amazing. It was an amazing day. It was a good day. day. Well, and, yeah. and literally everybody turned up, didn't they? And, I, you know, Sunderland fans travelled down. Yeah. And, and I was right. thinking, bloody hell, that was really, really good. Yeah. You know, I think I'll forever be grateful. That and everyone played in like Quinn Phillips. Like yeah. And that was the played, first time they'd all got back yeah, together since. Got back. So none, since of us, none of us had seen each other in ages. So yeah. everybody sort of got back together and again, all the WhatsApp groups think that that's all. And it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was yeah. such an amazing time. Yeah. And then did, did, you, did he take a pen? Did, did he take oh, my boy, three boys took a penalty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We kind of set it up so yeah, we yeah. Could, I could bring somebody down in the box and they all took a penalty. So. Yeah. <laughs> how were you? Um, how were the other boys during this period? Were they. Good as gold of yeah, it. They, Do they understand good. what was going on. Oh, to an extent, they did. Yeah. They're only young. Um, I think it's how you are as parents yeah. is then what. Because you'd have had to spend a lot of time with Toby at the hospital. Yeah, we and did stuff for like the that. first the first initial phase. Yeah, uh, he, you know he was in hospital, and then even when he came out, he had no immune system, so he literally could be. You know, he'd suddenly get a temperature, and it'd be one of them. You know, the missus would get the thing. The, Thermometer that we put in the air, and I've oh, and we'd be in hospital for two or three days, and it's went on for this did go on for years. Yeah. Um, but they were fine. You just kind of Resilience. get on, you get on, and be as normal as you can around them, and they, and, you know, it just becomes every part of yeah. your everyday life. So. And then That's you me. moved into well, you were you were doing sort of your artwork, weren't you? During playing, yes. Um, and then it was a decision. Then right, football's gone now. I'm going to move into this completely full time. Yes, pretty much, you know, end of my career. Do I become an artist? Do I stay in football? I think everyone... Kind not, of, ma- not many other people yeah. have got that choice, have they? Yeah, <laughs> I think, but I've always been a family man, so for me to then stay in football, not that I'd had... There was no options on the table. It's not like yeah, Wolves yeah. have come to me saying, look, we'd like you to come and be the coach for our one of our academy teams. Or, you know, no, there was nothing on the table anyway. So uh, it was Despite not... Despite like, what Wikipedia, in Wikipedia it says you were helping Wolves Academy. What a load That's of garbage. Not. They're trying to make themselves look good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know... I was at that crossroads. Do I try and get a coaching role and still not see the kids at Christmas yeah. and in the summer holidays because you know, and earn a fraction of the money, or do I um, do something that I love and work from home and see my family every day? And uh, so, so obviously you thought you thought about coaching, but uh, to be, I mean, to be an artist, did you had you been doing that previously? To a, a small extent, I you know I did it at school, so I, you know I. I I loved art. Uh, I just literally taught myself to do it when I was um, in the afternoons at Sunderland. So I took myself oil painting and then, yeah, it was just a hobby that got out of control and turned into a profession. I mean, I, lo- I love drawing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, to be honest, relate. Having, seen some, having seen some of your stuff, Joe, yeah. that's like, it's a little Fight bit more art. than, yeah, that's that's incredible. That's like, like you, like we said, it's fine art, isn't it? That is a real skill. So to, that's, and that's just self-taught. Yeah, self-taught. Artists <laughs> are renowned for not, to, you know, if I had a great technique, I wouldn't be telling you how to do it. So you have to find everything out yourself. So it's, you know, it's a tough world to be in. And even though I can... Think why, can pretty why, much why is it, what do you mean why is it a tough world to be well in? I can paint whatever I want but selling it is a different kettle yeah. of fish altogether it's really difficult did, to sell stuff did you have the same doubts like you did with your football in terms of once you thought you were going to go into the artist world as a profession did you have those doubts am I good enough is it going to sell no I just kind of knew I, I knew it's a different it's a kind of a different scenario because you haven't necessarily got to be a, a great artist to sell your paintings for yeah fortunes of money which is a really difficult for me it's a really hard part of the artwork because <laughs> i'm doing like fine art you know photorealistic stuff and i'm thinking what well, you know that i've had to really teach myself that and it's taken years to get there and i'm st- it's still really difficult to sell it and i'm not making fortunes you know whereas i see some stuff which is literally slapped together in minutes and, yeah. and charging 40 grand so you know, yeah that's <laughs> frustrating that's a really frustrating, frustrating part of the art world and you know i was a footballer so does Is it get frowned up? No, not really. It's helped in certain scenarios, but in gen, you know, in being in taken world, serious in the seriously. art world, it's difficult because, yeah. oh, you know, oh, look, he's a footballer trying yeah. to become an artist, you know. Which is never my work has to, Yeah, my work has to speak for itself, so... Um, so, tell us about your working day then, normally. So, are you are you working... Do you have, like, set working days or set days? Or yes, studio's in, in my house, so I'll take the boys to school, come home, go up in the studio, and then... Uh, Every day? 
every day. Oh, not Saturday, Sundays, because kids have 40, yeah. Yeah, and I'll do about seven or eight hours a day. Is it an obsession, Joe? I love it, yeah, yeah, I love it. Even if I couldn't sell it, I'd still do it. So, um, yeah, I love painting. And what's been some of your, you know, um, inspirations? Like, is it is it just like one of them where you just be in everyday life and you'll think, oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is, yeah. I have a certain range which I take to art fairs and which that's kind of my main stuff, but then I have other stuff which I, I'm like I'm an artist, so I can't just do the same thing every single day. I have to kind of push and do other things. But I, like I said, I have a main stuff and then I have other bits and bobs. So like but, uh, other things going on. So will you go up like just in the studio and just go, right, I'll be doing, working on this today and then the next day this, or just how you feel? <laughs> well, I have art fairs throughout the year, so I need to get so much work in preparation for that so i'll make sure i get that done and then obviously if some of that sells during that time i have to keep kind of refreshing that stock and making sure i've got that to take with me and then if i get those breaks in between commissions so i'll do commissions so i get those breaks in between then i can concentrate on the other different little things which you know i think as a business i need to do to because not everybody wants this one picture i type of picture i do so then i i could do commissions and try and take on you know, I need to catch somebody else's attention. Not everybody likes that picture, so well, they like this picture. So, you know, at different price ranges. So it's a tough business to be in. What am I getting for my Rapunzel sketch and my Homer Simpson? Are you getting anything in the market for that? <laughs> just, there's no market for that. Because hey, if you I speak to my youngest it. daughter, I'm, I, we should be doing an auction on them. Because she's buzzing off them. <laughs> like a tall ginger, Tony Hart. <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as you don't roll fire <laughs> Um, so and when you have an art fair is that like invite only or can uh, me no. David Gav come so an art fair oh I think anyone can anyone come in yeah, yeah, everyone so can that, come is that, in is that an art fair and exhibition then pretty much yeah so, so you, you rent out the place you have all your you'll say get a hundred artists in a in a nice venue you will pay for your area and you will go along and try and sell, and sell your stuff and it we'll, is, we'll it's a that. tough world to be yeah. in yeah because you've got thousands of pictures and you just want one person to come in and spend their money on your stuff and, di- and obviously you have prices on all your stuff yes as well. yes yes but the, can people people obviously pay you as well don't they as well saying like commissions so I mean say right can you paint a picture of me David Gow <laughs> and we'll give you whatever or do you, or do you then yeah, we no. say you want a picture of us and you say yes, it will cost you pretty much £1,000 whatever yeah, it is exactly so you go in and say look if you want something this big yes it's going to be a couple of grand if, look I also do miniatures so, which are 100 quid, but they, I'm limited to what I can do on a, on a miniature, so... Have all your, lots of footballers asked you to do stuff for them? Some, not, not loads, but some some have, so... Uh, we could do, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, what do you do about getting out there, Joe? Because, like, for me, I, I don't know about other people, but, I'd like, something for me, I'd love that, like, for my family, or, you know, whether it's an old football picture, or, like, something... Try make your nose look smaller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we better do that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Take, take two inches off that, my forehead. That's, that's why I'm behind the mic like this, Joe. That's why. I, that's why I sit like this. Yeah. <laughs> Wits always tries to get me on the angle, but I'm always like this, like moving around. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I, like I just would have thought that they'd be coming out in their droves, like you know, a fella footballer, ex footballer. Yeah, but footballers don't. It's not. It's not. Yeah. It's, but it's when not you've got a family, world, you've got a home, it? and. Yeah. Surely that would be real niche. It's not, it's not a footballer's niche. world. I don't think footballers has got tons of money, and they want to. I don't know. They've got nothing to spend it on. This is what I mean. Ego. Yeah, but but you know, it's not like, would, Joe, would Joe not then? want a picture of him coming for a cross? <laughs> like on his landing? You know, like done by Jody Craddock. <laughs> the next football. I some think do. That's, yeah. so I've done some. But I think half the time it's like the missus that takes control of what's going in the house. And yeah. Like, no, you know. Yeah. So it doesn't even come down to the footballer. I think it maybe once they retire and it's like, oh, you know, I need a pitch. I need a present for the missus. That's kind of. But uh, yeah, it's a funny world. Footballers, you know, they have so much money. I would have Why just thought go out and look for I'm sure I just thought you'd be inundated. Do, do you do anything to get out there or is it just within the, oh, the use social or? media as much as I can, yeah. which is a really, it's really true. tough, tough thing also. So where can we get hold of you yeah, on social, social media? Fa- I do them all, Facebook, Instagram, uh, what else? LinkedIn, well, Cra- TikTok, Cradicart. I do everything. Is that uh, what it's, the handles are, Cradicart? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you'll find, if you just Cradicart. Google it, you'll, you'll find it easy. You know, like, I do TikTok, I do one post on TikTok. And they got 3.7 million views. I'm thinking, oh, mate, yeah. this is it, this is it. Next post, 250, 250, 200. I'm thinking, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? You know, it's a re- really... we got our media guys, Evolve, shout out to Evolve, isn't it? Media guys who are going to try and help us do that because it's the same thing. We want to try and get ourselves in the stiffs out there, same as yourselves. So. They'll be tapping you up, Joe, we'll before you go. We'll help each other. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. 
So what does the future hold for you and your family then, Jody? What's happening? What's your plans? What's happening? You've got your three boys, all yeah. great, healthy, most yeah. important thing. To, just to be a family and enjoy it for as long as possible. You know, the, my oldest is 19. I don't think he's moving out of home anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that, isn't it? It's just Have you left enough hints, Joe? I've got a 19-year-old. She's not taking out. the hint. No, I think, but I think then why would you move out of home at this age? Yeah. Yeah. All everything that's going on in society, you know, why would you? The cost of everything because you just wouldn't do it. So yeah, just I'm just a family man, and that's it. You know, I, I help run my kids' football teams. I'm involved now with the men's team on Saturday afternoon. Who's one of my older lads now plays for? So uh, yeah, I do do coaching and that, and I'm involved in that. Gym in the morning. Still gym in the oh, gym. At Ten fit. past five, I get up to the gym every morning. It's ridiculous. Why, why are you doing that? Then? Well, my Can lad works at, in that? in Brom. He's a jeweller, so um, so he has to be in at Brom at seven half seven, and the trains at ten to seven. So I'm thinking, I'm not going. I can't go to the gym at the end of the day because get the kids football every single day. So I'm like, well, if you want to go to the gym, we need to go at ten past. Get up at ten past five, be in a gym for half five, and work for an hour and. Uh, so he's That's doing it with me. Mindset, that yeah, right, yeah. The other lads at school, so he's 17, so I'm like, if you want to come to the gym, you need to go to Tampa, so he's coming as well. Yeah. So so it is, uh, it's hard getting up, but... And but you don't need to do it, do you? But you do it, why do you do it? Well, he also wants a lift to the train station. And he does drive, but yeah. he don't want to park and pay money at the train station. <laughs> so he wants me to drop in there, so you, you things you do, isn't it? So you go together, though. that's quite a nice thing then. Yeah. Rather something cool. to go and do. Yeah. It's a fascinating story then, Jude, isn't it? Because, I mean, obviously I don't know any footballers who become an artist, but in the, and even you root into football is different, isn't it? And also your mentality as a young lad to, to, like you say, I mean, the biggest thing ever, I think, for anyone is just to recognise their potential, whether that's playing for the Dung Cow or whether it's playing for Man City. And all you want is your kids to recognise their potential. And you've done that through your mentality. And your mentality is still the same. Now, you know, getting up at half five, you don't need to get up at half five. If you put a few extra pounds on, it's not going to make much of a difference, is it? <laughs> really, in the grand scheme of things. But for your mind, like, you like to do it. I do. Yeah, I like going to the gym. I've always gone to the gym. So it's something I can still control. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I couldn't just think, no, go and run a 10K. I just couldn't do it. But uh, I can control going to the gym, trying to get stronger, just trying to look after my body the best I can can. You know, I'm getting older, so... As you get older, you're trying to control more, you know. Without yeah. embarrassing you, Joe, I've obviously, this is only the second time I've met you and the lads speak really highly of you and everybody I've ever come into contact who speaks of you and obviously I know the story of, you know, your career or whatnot. Everybody I know, and again, like Sam says about your testimonial and I was really intrigued about you being here today as with Connor Cody because the lads speak so highly of him as well. But you've just not been a letdown. You know, you just come across as the most lovely, class humble, you. class yeah. act of a guy. Um, and really inspired me today on a, on a few things. Just things like getting up and you know being in a routine and following your passions and maximising your potential, which is something that you know we should all strive to oh, do. So yeah, it's been you. brilliant. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. I think that's just how I've looked at things. And what an life. influence on Dave and yeah, the other lads. Oh, what huge. a big big figure in the in the story of Wolves, isn't yeah. it? As well, Dave? and it could have quite easy if I'd have if we'd have had the the older pro at Wolves who was a bit of a bit of a lad who was out yeah, all the time and things like that. We could have quite easily jumped on that as well yeah. if that makes sense but yes, I really yeah, do I think you modelled that generation of, of Wolves players coming through we definitely me and then I took that right throughout my career then and I think that's probably why well, I, would I maximised yeah. what, what I was doing as well um, off the I back did of that I did I, didn't, I, didn't. <laughs> I think you're so similar I think in so similar what you've done you said Jury's a big influence on yeah, you massive. doing that Right, important bit now, you've got to pick your five-a-side team or players you played with. Now, this is going to be really difficult, Jordy, for you, I think. <laughs> not, be, not, be, not because of me, Dave, yeah. Sam, yeah. Well, maybe Dave, but no. not me. But, go on, who would you have in goal? Who's the best goalkeeper you played with? Bear in mind, you had Lionel Perez, Rash, <laughs> Thomas Sorensen. He was very good, wasn't he? Yeah. Matt uh, Murray would have uh, been uh, Matty was quality. And I think Matty could have played for England. He was absolute quality. You know, providing he improved on his kicking, he could have played for England. He was really good. It didn't matter um, when he can throw it as far as what he yeah, can throw exactly, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Probably had it. So maybe Matty Murray, just because he was so imposing in the box. Yeah. Big call that, isn't it? Yeah. Tom Sorensen around. Tommy Sorensen was quality as well. Yeah. I just uh, I just remember playing alongside Matty and just thinking how, how good he was. So but maybe I'm thinking potentially as well what he really could have done. 
Yeah. And unfortunately, he's just unlucky on the international yeah. stage, wasn't he, Sorensen? You know, <laughs> 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 I don't know if you heard that podcast. What was that again? Where was it? I was about the Schmeichels. Oh, yeah, the Schmeichels. <laughs> Thomas Sorensen didn't play for Denmark because of this, because of this Schmeichel dad and the son. And we looked up and Thomas Sorensen had 101 caps for Denmark. That was, that Tom, we're, that was we're, we're renowned for our research, Joe. We're Tom. renowned for it. Our research is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was, ex- he was, he was excellent, wasn't yeah. he? He was very he professional. Was. So it's, it's, it's very close between yeah. them. You got to pick one though, Joe. You have got to go with one. He has Matt Murray. He's Matt Murray. You go with Matt, Matt Murray. Matt. Right, okay. centre right, centre off. So this is who's your who's the best player centre off you play with? Now that's a big call, isn't it? Because you've had it a is. lot of good players. I suppose all I can put it down to is when I was most successful. Yeah. And that would have been when we were in the Premiership with Sunderland. You know, finished seventh twice, and it was um, it was Emerson Tone. Yeah, you know, that's who I yeah. played alongside, and we had a really really good partnership. I know it could have been a bit, you know. Yeah. At times, a little bit of a liability, and he'd like, and he yeah. was, you know, he'd like to think he could bring the ball and weave his way out the back, and yeah. he'd get caught on it, and I'd be <laughs> covering his ass all the time. Yeah. But uh, we just had a really good partnership. So um, you know, there's, there's loads of players I played, you know, I played with Yoki Bjorden, who was quality as well, Daz Williams, Christoph Barrett at the Wolves. <laughs> but it comes down to being finishing twice in the Premiership yeah. seventh, and, and that was my partner. So Matt Murray, Emerson, Tom, a couple of midfielders in your five side, <laughs> Mickey Gray. Kevin was Ball. It? Yes, go on. Tell us about Kevin Ball then first. They were just well, Mickey Gray, as well as being a baller, he was he was hard as nails and, and Kevin Ball was just hard as nails, you yeah. know yourself. He, yeah. He, and uh he's gotta be one I of just the think that ever. I just think me as a player, I just saw saw that in players and I thought, you know, it kind of reflected on me a bit and and that's you know, always Tony Adams was I always looked at Tony Adams when I was younger and Believe it or not, Beanie Jones, purely yeah. for making a career out of not really being a great yeah. footballer, but being pure passion. But these were, you know, Kev Ball and Alex Ray were, were not only footballers, but they were full of Dude, passion. I, I, and Mickey, Mickey Gray or Alex Ray? Who did I say? Uh, I said, sorry, Alex Ray and, and Kev. All oh, right, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say, when he said Mickey Gray is hard on nails, I thought, that's <laughs> generous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, they were both at Sun, I was at Sun with them. They, like, Kev yeah. Ball was with. Shared a few stories on, yeah. He was a tough, tough man. Yeah. I remember, I think it might even be before you come, when he got his jaw broke at somewhere, it was like half time, and his jaw was literally split down the middle. It was hanging off. You could see it was broken. He was like, I'm fine, I'm fine for the second yeah. half. And you're like, you're not fine. Yeah, yeah. You're not fine. Your jaw bone's <laughs> cracked down the middle. He had his face wired up for like eight weeks. He was like, get, yeah. come off the pitch, Kevin. <laughs> come off the pitch, go to hospital. I'm fine. But he was a like, massive forearms, didn't he? Was a and these are players I think every team needs yeah. these type of players. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Alex Ray was brave as anything, getting on the ball. And yeah. He had some tough times at Sunderland, didn't he, with various yeah, he bits? Did. Yeah, he But he was so brave, like, he was nasty, tough, get on everyone's case. But he was a great lad as I well, was, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He'd set the forward. Oh, oh Kev Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. Goals. Goals. You know, and him and Quinny together were such a yeah unbelievable partnership. That Sunderland team was set up, wasn't it, with like Nicky Summer, Bianca Johnson, yeah. crosses coming in everywhere. It was just, it was perfect, wasn't it? Absolutely yeah, perfect it was, for them. And it worked. And he would just score, like you said, in training. Because he, 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 was, he wasn't like a fantastic footballer, was he? Like he but he would he would just score all the time, wouldn't he? Just hit the target. You'd think, oh, some of his goals are the phenomenal. Yeah. 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 That's a great team, that. Yeah. Fair play. Incredible. Majority. Amazing. <laughs> Joe, it's been brilliant. Thanks so much yeah, for coming. Thank you for your time, mate. Absolutely oh, loved it. Pleasure. And he's got a Tesla, same as Dave, hasn't he? Wolves, Wolves oh, sponsored Wolves cars, Wolves boys, isn't it? Wolves boys, isn't it? <laughs> Wolves ex players. We, we, we need to no, get, we need no, to get no. Tesla to sponsor in the stiffs, don't we? We haven't that many guests with Teslas. Jez Moxie sorted it out for him. Yeah. <laughs> he did, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's one thing he didn't sort out. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Joe, Jody. thank you, mate. Cheers, Jen. Good luck for the future, and we'll share all your stuff with you. Brilliant, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you much, everybody. Thanks very much for listening. In the stiffs with Budgie Motors. Budgie Motors are on Stafford Park in Telford and Featherbed Lane in Shrewsbury. For all your car needs, contact Budgie now.